Uh oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is, huh? Anybody? Kayla, hey, guess what day it is? Oh, come on, I know you can hear me. Champ, 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 champ. What day is it, champ? <laughs> hey, Cash, guess what the day is? It's game day. What, what? Haven't seen him in a minute. How's he doing? Cash is fine. No, no, no. Not Cash, not Dirk, not Champ. Oh, who are we talking about? The very first person you see. Earl? Is that Pants DJ? No. Oh. But he got caught in the wave. Yep. Uh, Sneed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Hey, come here real quick. So, yeah, we are uh, in our studio today. We're about all Mavs all the time, but you can throw the camera over there. Babe, come here um, real quick. Because we actually okay. have come three. Uh, we thought we were going to have three. Uh, we thought we were going to have a lady in studio, and you could see Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine over there. We love Jasmine. Thank you. I love you back. We love Jasmine. We love her, <laughs> folks. Uh, but there are three ladies in studio. We not only have Jasmine. But we I have uh, Lady Jake. Would say four because I. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Rachel. Interns people. <laughs> wow. But that's she's doing a lot to help our show. <laughs> three fourths, perhaps three and three fourths. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Rachel. I was only looking over there at the uh, the casting couch, and on that oh, is. Right. Um, you just put my daughter on the casting <laughs> couch. She's not on it. She's absolutely behind the couch. But uh, we have a wife. Not my wife. And uh, yet. <laughs> Fair. We could pull a Hunter Biden type situation here at some point. I would be totally okay with it. You got to get Chappie's approval. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but we also have a daughter behind the couch, and she's very sweet. She's very nice. Come here, sweetheart. Um, someday she might, she might be like my daughter someday where she's on the air and being real mean to everybody. <laughs> She knows my daughters. Do you know uh, Ava or Eden? No. No? Yeah, okay. You do. Nah. That's all right. They babysit you every now and then? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Same anyway. Up. Miss Eden? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we want you to stay sweet. Oh. Then don't get in the radio. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're not in there. Don't oh, ask. We're not in radio. What's the name of the show, babe? Dumb Zone. That's right. Is that a bad word? <laughs> um. Yeah. 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 What's dad doing that for? But we're allowed to say it whenever we're talking about daddy's job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do you like or dislike that name? What is your opinion of the name? Dislike it. Mm. Yeah. You're just like Ava and Eden. They don't like it either. Oh. They also don't like the name of our company. Our company is called No Puppet. <laughs> what do you think of that? Okay. It's a laugh. Are you... Thumbs up or thumbs down on no puppet? Thumbs crossword. Oh, just um, kind of yeah, like not real sure? Yeah. That's pretty, pretty much how everyone feels about us. Pretty mid. <laughs> yeah, mid. <laughs> thumbs crossways. <laughs> well, thanks gonna, for joining us today. What are you going to do today? Mm, don't really know. No school? No school. Why not? Because I got summer break. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You kind of don't really have much, do you? Yeah. yeah. Are you gonna watch the Mavs game tonight? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's the who's uh who's on the Mavs? Any Luca? player? Luca. That's right. That's all well, you need to know. Who's Luca's best friend? Kari. Uh huh. Nice. And, and who's Dad's best friend that plays for the Dallas Cowboys? Um. It starts with an M. Mm, <laughs> Micah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Keep telling the world that, and yeah. maybe you'll will it into existence. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, I'm thanks up. for being on the show today. You're welcome. Nora. There's the Nora. smile. Nora. Yeah. Good job, sweetheart. She's also a big fan of Jasmine. Cause I mean. Unfortunately, Jasmine didn't know what she was getting into when she was doing some filming for us. And <laughs> she had yeah. to babysit. Ended up babysitting for like hours. three hours. Yeah. In a latex pink dress. Yeah. Yeah. And a black wig. Bye, guys. But here I am. But you weren't the most uncomfortable person in a pink dress that day. I was not. <laughs> As uh, Blake was part of that. Which, by the way, thanks for pulling out all the stops here for the guests. Because this questionable sin 
Sinbad blanket. What's questionable about it? I mean, a lot. I need the backstory on why there's a Sinbad blanket on the guest couch, and the, I'm actually questioning if I should be wrapped up. In the backstory is that Sinbad rules. Yeah. And somebody sent us a Sinbad okay. blanket. He's awesome. That's all you need to know, I we guess. We have a bunch of Sinbad movies over here, too, in his <laughs> yeah. book. Yeah. I read his book. All right. Which, took Which we minutes. never got a review from. No, it's fascinating. It's really too deep. It's kind of like uh, <laughs> right. It's like Infinite Jest. You have right. to keep reading it over and over. And, and read like, reviews. And like over time, I've thought about it and just mm-hmm. caught myself like, oh, man, what about it? What, what? Maybe it meant something different than I first thought. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to do a reread. I love that. Well, I think it only took you an afternoon, so it wouldn't be too hard. Well, it's funny when Nora came in and then, you know, not on the air, but when we were off the air, people ask a little kid a question, and if she just gives a mundane answer, it was like, oh, oh, oh yeah! <laughs> like, yeah. she is, she lives in this bubble. It's like I say about my uh, my little dogs mm-hmm. in the way where we live. They will walk across the street very slowly, even sit down in front of a car, a moving car. Why not? Every car has always stopped for them. Yeah. They think that's just the way the world works. If you walk in front of a car, it will stop. So why not? They've never, they don't know what getting hit by a car is. Yeah, that's so why. The, that, the kid thinks she's the funniest thing going. And that and that's why, you know, I didn't do it in front of you guys. Um, but most of the time, whenever she offers something at home, I'm like, that fucking sucked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Boy, he changes a lot when she leaves, doesn't he? I was like, that was yeah, boring. Night and <laughs> your stories suck. <laughs> your, your information is is just terrible, you know? Man, when I look at our run sheet, I'm seeing lots and lots of Mavs today. Dude, it's here. It's here. It's not like just I, the playoffs. Yeah, and I feel like over the last couple of days, it, it took me until like last night to remember that this was happening. Just like the the long layoff yeah. is so weird. Dude. Week off. Like the fact sucks. that the Celtics had nine days, the Mavs had seven days. And then this thing's going to take like two weeks, right? Mm-hmm. I think Not if we do it right. It's going to take Ooh. four games. <laughs> well, yeah, two days off between every game except for one. Yeah. So like just even over the weekend, the fact that there was no Mavs basketball. Like I just got like lulled into this sense of like, oh, this is not actually happening. And then last night, like talking to uh, my editor from D Magazine, like getting geared up to write about it, I'm like, holy S. They actually did it. And then like reading all the predictions from ESPN, which I don't know if you recall, like two years ago, uh, like the Sun series, nobody picked them. And then they walloped them. And this time it's a little bit different. Yeah, despite the fact that the... Are we just in Mavs talk? Should we we have a new open for Mavs talk, but because that airs with our our video shows, because we're going to be on YouTube today. So if you are listening to us, like most people do, I heard that's big now. You can go back to YouTube. What platform? Yeah. <laughs> what platforms are you like thinking are? Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's open Mavs talk. Two, three, four. Joke for two people. Basketball, gimme, gimme, gimme the ball because I'm gonna dunk it. Basketball, gimme, gimme, gimme the ball because I'm gonna dunk it. Yeah. Courtesy of Video Man. We want to do a. Absolutely spectacular. I love it. But uh, I don't remember what he just said, but I had a great point to follow up on it. The last uh, thing I said before you threw it to the open was... Uh, that his daughter sucks. No. You were complaining that, like, that it's going to be all Mavs today. No. no that's betting, that, that people are actually betting like, on the Mavs. picking the Mavs now. Despite the fact that apparently this is one of the... Most lopsided betting. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot... That... that. Now I'm like concerned. I don't like it. I hate it. Yeah. It's better when no one... I hate it. it. It's driving me crazy. Now Drake's involved. Oh, don't get me started. I'm so mad, y'all. The refs are going to fix it. The Drake thing hurts. That Drake has sided with the Mavs? Yeah. Uh, which team has Micah Parsons, your best friend, sided with? He seems to have jerseys for both of the- <laughs> Probably has to just ask uh, Michael Rubin, right? Who's that? Uh, he used to be a part owner of the 76ers, and I believe he owns that uh, apparel company, Fanatics. Ah, uh, Okay. And he has the 
And is he a sponsor? Mike In my sponsor? opinion, lightly racist event every year, the all-white party. I thought that was a Miami thing. I just started watching the uh, Clippers show on Hulu. Do mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Of course, Clipped, right? I do, but I hate the Clippers, so I don't watch it. Is that where that generic well, Steph like- Curry is coming from? Yes. Okay, I haven't seen that far. I watched about half of the first episode this morning. I'm uh, I'm going to watch it. You're going to like seeing the Warriors. <laughs> but uh he had that it kind of starts he's having his white party. It's a thing apparently where rich people just have everybody wear white. Yes, it's yeah. a douche thing. It's not yeah. a racist thing, it's a douche thing. She's probably right. Yeah. I'm 100% right. <laughs> but I mean like Mike has been there at his white party. Yeah. And been to multiple like multiple games with him, so I, I I don't know where where Micah's allegiances lie, but my daughter definitely does think I'm actually friends with him. Good, keep it going. Yeah, I she was scrolling. well. You are more friends with him than I think you. Yes, anyone in this room. Yeah, he, he would recognize you on the street. He wrote me a note. Yeah, he gave you a gift. He never gave me a gift. Give me a gift card and a jacket. I've been bug chasing for years, and he won't do it. So we have um a But but real quick, I do think it's really, really weird how like uneven the betting odds are. <laughs> that it's very heavily favored for yeah. well I mean they won like sixty four games, so I guess But I I think the analytical numbers will show you that they're just this incredibly strong team uh throughout the whole season. Yeah. And even after the trade deadline when we're talking about how great the Mavs are Boston is number one in the NBA in all those numbers. But number two is the Mavs. Yeah. And so Dallas has the best player. And that's the thing. So if they end up winning, that will be the that will be everybody's well, that's why I picked it wrong. Or yeah. you just can't pick against a team that has Luca. I I I mean that's what we're all hoping. Which is just part of every strategy. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, the thing about it for me that that gets me the most fired up and also the most concerned. I think I told you guys a couple weeks ago. Is talk mentioned this to me? Who I think we're going to have on the show here in the next couple of days as he is coming to town from Slovenia. Not sure how many other chances they're going to get that are going to be this prime. Like Wimby's coming. Oklahoma City's not going anywhere. Yeah, the Oklahoma yeah. City. Remember, we had a comp for 2011. Yeah, how they were just, they just so to, young they and strong. They needed to learn, and then do you know the next year they did. They went to the finals. They go, went to the finals against the Heat. Yeah, so I don't think you could take any run for granted. I mean, look at 06. You thought you'd be back. Yeah. I mean, I know the lockout changed things in 11, but when you're good, you think you'll just be back, and that's not always the case. The Nuggets are not going anywhere. I suppose like there'll be a couple of other teams that fall off a little bit, but like with each passing year, Kyrie's older. Um, LeBron will kind of revive things this I mean, year. Yeah, you well, bring in Bron- LeBron and Bronny. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, Bronny in there. probably a shoe in for next year. I don't know. It just it just feels like right now they are so primed. Like this is the best chance you're going to get during. This portion of Luca's career. Uh, yeah, that's. But you also kind of feel like you've got Luca at the age of twenty-five. So, yeah, he's a child. You're still going to be around. Yeah. You're yeah. like they're all thinking a similar thing. Like we've got to face Luca for the next ten years. I, I guess kind of. I, uh, I remember when I was fired up as a little kid about the Cavs, but then they kept running into Michael Jordan. Yeah, I guess I guess for me the thing is just like I still remain convinced that at some point he's going to want to play in Florida or California. <laughs> nah, he's he's ours. I think so. I think he's ours. We can offer him the most money. I mean that just, number, the number that, that, that Spot Track has been putting out there. It's like three hundred fifty-six million dollars or something stupid. That's yeah, the last one I saw. It, it's like seventy-five million dollars a season with escalators. Is that starting? Like this off season, they can renegotiate. I believe it would be the one after that. Okay. But Feels like now's the time for renegotiating for all Mavs employees. Didn't Nico just got re-upped? And- Nico got re-upped. Kid got an extension just a couple of months ago. Let's get Derek Jones done. <laughs> 
That one's going to be tough. He's the only guy not under contract. Yeah. Well, someone has to money whip him because they can offer him the mid-level, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love him. I want him to stay. And he said he wants to stay, which whatever that means. But I've but you're right. Before. When the Thunder offer him yeah. whatever. Dude, how many times down. have you guys watched the, the Luka lob where Derek Jones the, is at the three-point line? Luka's at the three-point line. Luka throws a lob. And he dunked it. Well, even the the Kyrie one that's been the most watched clip of the NBA all year, or I think of all time. Yeah, that's the, the one where Luca Luca's on his back. stole the ball, passed it, the and then Kyrie, Kyrie lays it, uh, tosses it up for Derek Jones. Right? That's yeah. the coolest basketball play I've ever seen in my life. I've watched it so much that my dog camera has picked it up now, and every time you log into the dog <laughs> camera, you hear like the entire like everybody losing their minds. Yeah, I watched it ad nauseum. <laughs> Luca's, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I was surprised the Luca lob wasn't a higher percentage. Like I, I'm more impressed with that Derek Jones highlight. But oh, the three point one, yeah. Um, and even that clip that that video man just played there. The fact that they have lively, like he's not going anywhere. That was a sixty foot uh, assist lob, right? That's, that's the longest lob I've ever seen. Nobody leaves before. You're seven or eight, right? So, like, they've got Lively through his 20s. I want to adopt him. I, I suppose you could try. I, I mean, do. He doesn't have a mom <laughs> like, right Like, I could, I know, but, like, I could be a mom and not, like, a teen mom. <laughs> Sideshow lob. Love it. Um, I have a, a twist on mayor bets. <laughs> I thought we were done with this. It's not a mayor bet. Oh, no. Now, does Eric Johnson, does the big man have a bet with Boston? I can't remember. Yeah. He probably does. Yeah, right? we went through her yeah. Twitter. Yeah. She's like a real mayor. Oh, that's right. She doesn't do this stuff. Well, Six Flags New England. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love sports. What? Is this where we're going? I love sports. Why does New England have a Six Flags? We talked about this the other day. Valid question. They picked it up. They have it in like a... Like they bought up some of the old amusement parks that were going defunct, I think. In like... There was a place called Jaga Lake in Ohio that I think became Six Flags. Oh, okay. Like, the group who owns Six Flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro- okay. I don't know that they just opened a bunch of new ones. Maybe they did. But they have them, like, overseas. All I know is they have one called Six Flags New England, and they have a bet with Six Flags, Six over, Flags Texas. over Texas. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> What's the winner get? <laughs> Pete Carmichael, Six Flags New England Park President. Can I guess? Says, uh, <laughs> if your team wins, then nobody gets their head cut off riding a roller coaster oh, no. at your park that day. <laughs> if mean, your team loses, apparently that wasn't it. No one can wear a seatbelt on the. <laughs> <laughs> As a proud supporter of our local New England sports, you like that one, didn't you? I am not afraid to put it all on the line in support of our Celtics. Are they sending migrants to their Six Flags? <laughs> <laughs> So it's basically, from what I can understand from their press release, it's a one-day bit. Kind of like Eric Johnson has to wear an Edmonton Oilers jersey. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Six Flags uh, will name the Texas Giant the Boston Giant. That's so no. stupid. Are you serious? They will provide free admission for one week to anyone... With a Massachusetts valid ID. Okay. They're not coming down here. Yeah, I'm like, well, I'm gonna it's go like cash in. Thirty. They're not coming here. A traditional Celtic band, probably Celtic. Is it Ooh, Celtic? Yep, yeah, that's what it is. It's written Celtic, pronounced Celtic. Okay. Um, I don't have the Irish lineage that you do. <laughs> How would I know that? We'll follow the Six Flags over Texas Park president around for an entire day. That's it? So, like, he's whatever he's doing. He's walking to the office and... Kind of a beating. Wait, kind so of the Celtic beating. band is just going to troll him all day? Apparently. Okay. I mean, it would be pretty annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's just corny. It is corny, it is but corny, also... But it's better than wearing a shirt. Six Flags over Texas has to send some chicken fried steak, Texas chili, and Tex-Mex... And they will serve Boston cream pies to the first 100 guests entering the park, if indeed the Celtics win. 
The other way around, they've got a roller coaster. They're going to name the Dallas Skyscreamer. Uh, free admission to anyone from Texas. A country western band will follow their park president around. What a beating. Um, they'll send Boston Cream Donuts, New England Clam Chowder, and Boston Baked Beans here if te- if Dallas wins. And they have to serve uh, Dallas Pecan Pie to the first 100 guests. Pecan. Entering the fight. Pecan, pecan, still, still pecan, pecan. Uh, it depends. It doesn't. It does. It totally. It's does. a north south. Depends thing. on the dish. Yeah. He said he's always said pecan. Pecan. I think that's a Georgia thing, actually. Pecan. Well, I've yeah. been through Georgia a few times, one or two <laughs> times in my life. Got some friends there. I think this is. Uh, I think it's gotten out of control. Um, I'm interested to see how it ends. Somebody will do like, it right. It it feels like over the last like half decade, it has become just increasingly more annoying. What sports bets? Yeah, they're like, just corny. Make them good, like zoos and yeah. This is a zoo. Well, this turns into a zoo. Yeah, I don't know. I I I think it would be outside of Miami. Beating Boston in a finals would be like the coolest shit that has ever happened in my sports fandom life. I heard they have a five-year finals drought right now, or a championship drought in Boston. So that little dumb kid hasn't been in a minute. The one I referenced the other day. And after, yeah, I don't recall. He went to like twenty parades in like six years. Right. Between yeah, they the they. Bruins, I think they won Celtics, twelve Patriots in seventeen and, years, something like that. Yeah, and the kid like would his dad would post it every year. Yeah, this is probably football driven. But I think New York and Philadelphia are probably the top two you'd rather beat. But Boston's third. New York, I don't have like a ton of negative feelings about. Yeah, I don't either. It's Philly. Philly for me. Philly and for sure is up for there. sure. But Philly and Boston are like one A one B. You wouldn't want to beat Nick fans. I don't. I don't. Yeah, care. they don't piss me exactly. They don't piss me off. Like or the Giants, yeah. or the Jets. Like nah. it's just kind of like eh. They're mid. <laughs> that didn't work for you. Yeah, it did. No, it didn't. In my, head, <laughs> in my head it did, and that's all that matters, Kemp. All right, we have lots of Mav stuff throughout the day, but we also have other stuff, so I want to do some of that, like this. Because I got some actual mail at my house that is very important for you, Jake. Okay. In particular. Do we have Prophets and Outlaws doing that on video? Uh, we incorporate yeah. that into our video show. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Video's the future, Jasmine. That's what I've heard. YouTube. <laughs> it's big. It's going to stick around. Shout out, YouTube. I remember when YouTube first became a thing. Girl That's on, how old I am. Girl on pole. Girl on pole. Uh, guy at zoo or whatever. Um, I remember predicting failure because it was just grainy videos and everything was getting bigger. Your uh, drinks at McDonald's, your TVs. Sure. Why would, why would anybody want that? I'm not good at business and stuff. So I got this. Uh, uh, did he write a note with this? It's a, it's a very. This is a. See, I thought he was email. looking for the word envelope. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Leery of where this is going. Dan and Jake. <laughs> I am uh, intern Ryan Long's brother. Remember, he used to watch my house. Do you know Ryan? You ever meet him? Uh, I believe I might have hired him. Or was he before? No, no, no. He was, he was pre- before me. Okay, yeah. But I, I've definitely like, spoken with him before. Yeah. He he once he got married and had kids and stuff. No longer wanted to watch my house when I went on vacation. Aggie. Yeah. Definitely met him before. Yeah. Is Ryan a a tip off of an Aggie name? It's got top five. Got to be up there. Yeah. What are the top five Aggie names? Drew, Kyle, Ryan. Ryan uh, sounds like a yell leader name, though. Uh, right? That's the only three that really jumped to mind for me, but I promise you those are... Chad. I promise you Ryan, a Kyle, and Drew are top three. And then Heather. Heather? He- yeah, Heather. Like for females. So on March 25th, Jake's top five Aggie names. Kyle, Brian, Drew, Ben, and Cody. 
Brian or Ryan are both okay. interchangeable. Cody's definitely up there. He's just pulling out some dude perfect names. <laughs> you're you're it's a good call. Wow. But also, like I told you guys the other day, I have family members who are hardcore faithful eggs, and everyone they know has the same name. I wish I could have been there when Chappie stopped the car, turned off the radio, and said, Hey, no bonfire jokes today. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him about it next time we have him on. I promise you he remembers that. Because you were telling them to each other on the way. 100%. And we had been since the thing fell. <laughs> the thing fell. For like a week. So you're in engineering school. Huh. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's weird. Anyway, uh, we cleaned out our dad's house this spring. Oh, oh that sounds no. ominous. This is, can't be good. So now I have a collection of these coins. You don't need to buy your own. Uh, He's got the, Trump coins? Love the podcast <laughs> from Derek Long, day four. I don't know. Maybe it's a different coin. Oh, my God. What is it? It's exactly what you think it is. That's a great catch, by the way. Thank you. I've got WMJ it's hands. A, it's a, it is a Trump it's a coin. It's a Keep America Great coin. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. You want to put that on the camera there? All right. So his dad. This or not, but. His dad bought a bunch of these. Like, he only just sent us two of the collection. Dude, I'm telling you. This <laughs> what? We need a grift. This is what they sell, Let's dude. Let's put Blake's face on a coin. What can we do? Oh, that would sell. Uh, that would totally sell. What about OnlyFans? Yeah, Jasmine, do OnlyFans for us. You know, I wanted to with my feet for a while. I did. I'm on Wiki Feet. What the? <laughs> Let's keep going. It's a thing. Whatever this is. I'm on Wiki Feet. What does that mean? It's like Wikipedia, but for feet. Well, I mean, that was somewhat <laughs> self-explanatory. Well, I mean, that's what it is. Someone stuck me on it, and I found out. Where did they get your like pictures? Like, if I search, if we go to wikifeet.com, yes. we're going to find feet. Jasmine Sadler. Where did they get yes. your pictures? I They just pulled it from my social medias. Now, Which I means you put them I up there. I swear to you, with everything on me, I did not. So, back in the ancient day when I did radio, <laughs> this listener called and was like, hey, you know you're on Wikifeet, right? And I'm like, no. And so, we started looking it up, and I was. So, they went and pulled. So, if you, like, even look up any other... <laughs> like Rob's already. I'm serious. I'm serious. Rob, Rob had knows. it bookmarked. I'm serious. If you pull what anybody, yeah, look. Hell? Okay, put my name. There you go. See, you can see it right there. They just pulled. But see, my feet are in that picture. My feet are in oh, there. Oh, okay. Whoa, look at those with sandals, baby. Yeah. yeah, but see, then I got my toes done. I'm not a foot. Those are my, look at my legs. I love the yip yips from Sesame Street. That's what that picture was. Those are my toes. So yeah. there are dudes loving that. Or Those are not my toes. Somebody... That's an old picture. Everything. Are the yip yips like the aliens yes. that do uh, the letter of the day? Yes, that's my ringtone. It's actually. the letter of the day. It's the letter of the day. That's it's old. Does it bother you or does it flatter you that day. dudes are <clears throat> doing stuff to themselves uh, looking at your feet? Well, it doesn't. What bothered me at first is they gave me a low rating and that pissed me off. <laughs> okay, see, that's the. <laughs> because I know, I take damn good care of my feet. Yeah. So if I don't have any. Those are, oh. those are Tyron Smith's shoes, by the way. Those big old flip flops. Go back to that. Yep, those are Tyron Smith's shoes. Those are not those. the best feet I've ever seen. Yes, they are. Mm. Do I need to whip my feet out? Those are my toes. Look how pretty they are. That one was better. Okay. But I was in Tyron Smith's flip flops. Of course, my feet aren't going to look great in those. You got somebody's birthday or something over there? You don't like foot talk? No, oh. I don't. <laughs> Mystic Dan, 100, my Hunter Biden. I, I don't have a problem. I just don't want to like look at him all day. Wow. No offense. Not I think you're not to you, but he's trembling. I think we did. Something. Yeah. First, Jake ripped your feet. And now Blake. I know. I, I I'm not I'm not okay, here. Okay, those to rip. are better. I just want to move on. Those are better. Thank you. Well, I'll, that's because you're seeing you some thigh also. <laughs> Probably doesn't hurt. Um, that was young thigh, too. My Doug Fister birthday is Thursday. Today's Thursday, June 8th. <laughs> Mr. Fister. No, wait, 6th. June 6th. 6 6. Uh, my leaders are overweight doctors, women in braces, both kinds, <laughs> and Blake's inevitable bat flip after taking Jake's 60 mile an hour heater into the stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to. I won't be mad at you. This is the uh, the picture of Blake and a guy now, uh, if we want to add that on the video. Um, he said, my question is, would Jake be willing to pitch to other DFs? I would love a chance at keeping his ERA infinite. I can't mash quite like Blake, but he did draft me first overall on his softball team in 2012. Do you know this guy? Yeah. Look at Blake. Mark Jordan, of course. Mark with a C. Mm-hmm. 
See, it's about how you make people. Were you the feel. coach? Is that why you're drafting? Yeah. So we did a uh, a winter league ball, which is 250 uh, foot fences, and it's kind of a give up kind of thing. It's just an excuse to play in December. And we knew everyone in the league <clears throat> well enough to put everyone in the draft. We had four captains, and I was one of the captains. And so yeah, he was my first pick, and I think we came in fourth. Ouch. That's tough. Yeah, leave yeah. that part out. Yeah. I was just trying to be honest. Bracket Dan, today is my Chris Kamen birthday. <laughs> 30. I, I don't even. Don't give up now. Three? You started no. this bit. <laughs> I, I absolutely <laughs> didn't start this bit. However, I will tell you. 35. Uh, that when we decide that we want to start replaying ticket audio, we should replay some of the Chris Kamen show because it was absolutely electric. I have a Chris Kamen versus Bob folder. The whole Did we folder? put that together? There's a reason you have that folder is because I made it. Okay, I figured. Yeah. Yeah, we never got to it. We literally never talked basketball. It was guns. It was slavery. It was reparations. Whoa. Seriously. What? Yeah. It was a. <laughs> it was a boring time for the Mavericks. Yeah. This is from Eric. He says, uh, "I have smoked a cigarette with Jake." Where? That's a big thing, Jasmine. People who have at one time or another smoked a cigarette with Jake. What kind of cigarette? Doesn't matter. Probably just a, a regular one. Okay. But who knows? With Jake. <laughs> Any, anything goes. This guy will uh, smoke anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. My leader is the 1999 sci-fi comedy means. Galaxy Quest starring Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, and Alan Rickman. Really weird movie. Um... Audiences around the world agree it truly was a comedy of galactic proportions. <laughs> Feels like a copy and paste. <laughs> My opposite of leader is IJB's 2016 election night special. Oh, that was a tough night, man. Did you guys like delete it or something? <laughs> I don't think he would have a problem with me saying this, but uh, he didn't want to put it up. You guys are really sad? I mean, I was fine. Is this like... The day we left the ticket and I thought had it was that hilarious. recording that we didn't, uh, we haven't put out there yet. But there were a couple people. Saroy, curiously, was like really, really upset about it, and then TC was like, "Hey, we shouldn't put this out." And you lost seven dollars betting on Hillary. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, I lost my big wager. We, anyway, that's from we, Eric Park. We eventually did put it out. The great Eric. And don't Park. run from it. Good dude. Day two subscriber number 1307. So that gives us a little idea of how many subscribers did we have early on. What do we have, 1,000 the first day? We've slowed down since then. Yeah. We could go 1,000 a day. I think it would be going great. I went, to a, uh, I went to an SMU basketball game with him once where the basketball bunch was there. Oh, uh, Garrett and who's the basketball bunch? It was like Garrett, Witten, Romo, Beasley. And also, Beasley. I'm pretty sure George W. Bush was there. He goes to a lot of SMU games. Yeah. Well, didn't wasn't uh, uh, Jason Garrett too part of that? Was I just said that. Did you? Okay. Yeah. It I was like you guys out. Ten to fifteen seconds ago. So <laughs> welcome to the out. team. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jasmine's first not listening. <laughs> it, used it, to it. It happens. It happens. It happens a lot to Jake. It does. I mean. People don't really listen to Can I use to what mid again? I would rather you didn't. Okay. But you could do what you want, though. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, got something else from a different Alec, a guy named Alec, who said, um, regarding Dan flipping the toilet paper at the house he was at. Do you want to reset this for her real yeah, quick? I got one of these, too. <laughs> Please reset. I think it's... So I think there's important. unwritten rules in life. Okay. And I think one of those unwritten rules that should be followed is... If you hang your put your toilet paper on, it should hang over. Yes. You should be pulling down. Yeah, what's sociopath? Some people will under? put it backwards nope. and it's hanging against the wall. Nope. Right. But so we were it. at we were at a listener's house, as we will do. <laughs> oh no. What did you do? <laughs> and uh I was there and wanted to use a little toilet paper and then thought just to dab it off. I wasn't like going number two. But you gotta do a dab. Wait, you do a dab? dab? I thought it was a shake. Well, you do a shake, but then just to make sure everything gets out, you gotta do a dab. <laughs> I don't do a dab. That's me. Yeah. I'll take out some toilet paper. Let's do a dab. And but just... I do think, like, the older you get, 
Uh oh. And like, it just drips out. I've noticed this. <laughs> there are times where like I think I'm done. I'm not done. But yeah, I just I like to inform the ladies if they want to know how uh, the guys do things because I'm always fascinated uh, by what they're doing in there. No, because you, you sit down to pee. Very often, but not at a listener's house. Okay. I do. Do you at a listener's house? Mm-hmm. You're every time now? I haven't stood up and peed. You know what? I did it like a you couple weeks ago. You are lying. I did it do a, not sit down to pee. They, they do. Oh, yeah. It's great. I did it a couple weeks ago. I stood up and peed and was like, what is this? It's are so you clean. screwing with me because I wasn't listening for 30 seconds? No. This, no. This is I real. don't stand up to pee. It's great. Once you learn that as a man- as a, you will you will <laughs> understand that society has been wrong all these years. There's just, I, I, if I'm it's, outside. Uh, <laughs> yeah, know. please don't. As someone who knows, don't sit down to do that outside. Yeah, yeah. If I'm outside or if I'm camping or something like that, like no problem. But if I'm inside, yeah, I have I'm never. I I haven't. In fact, I've lived at my current house for about ten years. I've never stood up. You're kidding. Except in the shower. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird if you sat in the shower and did that. But yeah, for for whatever reason, a couple weeks ago, I gotta ago, sit down. <laughs> for whatever reason, a couple weeks ago, like I just did it, and I'm like, this is not right. Yeah, it gets all over the. It's all over. No, the- <laughs> not really. <laughs> now I don't dab though. But back to your point, what I he, dab on the haters, bro. What he did was he flipped the toilet paper at a stranger's house. No, you didn't. Good for you. They need to know better. That's what he thought. I thought I was helping out. That's all I do is help people out. Very selfless. Um, I don't think I would have done it, but I respect it. Were they mad because you told them you were going to dab and then did that? Or, like, why did they get mad? <laughs> oh, that's a new development. Do you want to tell the feedback? Because you've probably gotten a lot of the same. Um, yeah, Dan flipped a teepee at the house, but Dan did not realize that the toilet paper is backwards due to the cat. A lot of people have reached out and said that's why they do it. And this guy did have like a real a hole cat. (laughs) He did. It was like the worst cat you've ever met. Cats are a holes anyway. Yeah. Uh, But this one they got out of the garbage can or it was previously abused and and whatever. And it was really mean. It was. It was. uh, And I could see it finding that toilet paper and just ripping it all down. So apparently, if you hang it the other way, it doesn't do that. It makes sense. Yeah. It's hanging that way, but it doesn't. Yeah, it'll just roll. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There's that right. a-hole cat. Science. Oh, people have actually videoed that? Okay. On well, of YouTube. Course. On YouTube. If it exists, huge. it's probably on it's huge. YouTube, right? Probably. And we got 45 more seconds of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> or the hub. I uh, got an email here from Nick, was that, and I read this a while back. Was that Luca video really on the hub? I don't think so. Oh. I think it was a Photoshop, but it was oh. very funny. Which one? There was a, like a mock-up of a Photoshop of Pornhub, and it said, fat white European, <laughs> like... Bust the ass. Oh, of, I yeah, did of see this. Of a Frenchman or something. <laughs> but I was searching for it. <laughs> of a French guy. <laughs> you were searching for it. It was. Not in Texas. We got a VPN if you want it. I know. <laughs> and there, evidently there's a law on how Dude, many. Can you teach me how to use it? Did I tell you guys about this the other day? Like the game that we lost on Sunday when I was talking shit to one of the guys on their team. Super cool guy. Uh, we started talking VPNs together. It was very weird. Wait, like, VPN, a- like what you log in on your computer network? Yeah. I was like mouthing off to him, and he was mouthing off to me, and somehow- How por- did we get to VPN? Somehow porn came up. Oh. He was like, that was uh, that was filthy. I'm going to put that on the hub. And I was like, well, you're not going to be able to watch it in Texas. He was like, well, I have a VPN. You know there's a limit to how many sex toys you can have in Texas? It's like six. Why the fuck do you know that? I'm just, I read it. I read about it. It's like six or you'll get arrested. I swear to you. Jesus, Pete. No. Why? It just came up on Twitter. I saw it. And you were talking about porn. Why six? I know. Why six? I don't know. It's a weird number. You're five. It's like, okay. Yeah. Totally good here. I'm seven. Way too many. What if you own two different residences? Can you have five in one and six in the other? That's why I ask my And like, is it per household? It is per household. Don't ask. It's not like I can have five. He can have five. You can keep two here. 
You can have some at your vacation house, okay. at the lake house. Yeah. And have some here. Okay. At your house. But yeah, it's a law. <laughs> it's the more you know. The more you... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Uh, got a little follow-up, too, when we were talking about funny road names. In fact, if you do get to see our video, you'll get to see that we have mounted, 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 mount. Anyway, put on the wall <laughs> the uh, Chisholm Trail uh, sign that somebody sent us. Very nice of somebody to have sent us that. We think that's a dirty-sounding road. You think that. Chisholm? <laughs> Chisholm? Why does that sound dirty? I don't know. What if I left? I liked it when I. What said if I that. left a Chisholm trail on your back? <laughs> you dab, so that can't happen. Uh, it is incredibly <laughs> fortunate that we don't have an HR arm of this operation. Actually, we just hired uh, Jasmine to do I'm HR. The HR. <laughs> I never thought about it until he said it. You know, like I like I said the other day. Whatever I, you I, do to sleep at night, Jake, that's fine. I anyway, never, I never thought about that term being dirty ever. Anyway, this is from. Z- he says Z1 Darren, uh, day five, number 2635. So that means after one day, we had 1,300. And it took four more days. Then we keep slowing down mm-hmm. even more to now we'll get like one or five a day or negative two. Depends on the day. I mean, who's looking? It happens. <laughs> yeah, who's yeah, looking? You every day. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, anyway, he thought Cheek Sparger Road is really funny. Oh, that one grosses me out. Which they used to call Cheek Spreader I, again, as a little kid. I, and you lived that, over there, so I just wondered if that was in your... It wasn't, no. and I, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very close to Brown Trail. Um, <laughs> but that one felt, like, really obvious. That's Jake's funniest name road in, in the Metroplex, Brown the Trail. The H-E-B, the old Brown Trail. Yeah. And then uh, sent a couple others with pictures provided as well. Um. Okay. One of them is called Gaywood Road. Stop it's over it. there by Walnut Hill and in Inwood. I see that right there. So if you lived on Gaywood Road. <laughs> yep. And then there's another area. It's like, it's, it's like a homosexual boner. Then he enjoyed uh, Hyman Elementary School. Mm-hmm. There is a Hyman Elementary School, which was uh, broken into. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. I had a hard time with that during the... Uh, oh Stop you stop. I had a hard time with that during the uh, the Star series. <laughs> they had a, a fairly prominent player named Hyman. Yes. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, Hyman goes five hole. I'm like, I feel like you forced that. <laughs> Finally, Armin. As it were. This is an email I got way back, and I read it way back. From uh, Nick Bade. He says, I'm sure uh, about 100 100- one of about 100 people that did this, but uh, I watched you play the William Pace intro last week, and then I made you a Dumb Zone intro. Do you remember the audio? I played this audio for you. Yeah. And so William Pace, it's really hard to reset this, Jasmine, but I'm going to do it for you and those uh, new subbies or the YouTube audio. Hello, YouTube. We're on YouTube today. <laughs> He's a guy who did a late night cable show in Dayton, Ohio in 1998. I lived in Dayton, Ohio in 1998. Happened upon this. He was the weirdest dude ever. Uh it it was just the strangest show I had ever seen, but he did interviews. He 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 read viewer mail. <laughs> Um, pretty much exactly what we, he was the dumb zone before the dumb zone. Yeah. And then he had like a real, uh, I don't know. Can we play his open? Like the, the not William our Pace show yes. through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Chrome Conservatory. There's always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace show. <laughs> Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phibbs, and Congressman Tony Hall have <laughs> appeared on the William so Pace out of show. Nowhere. <laughs> now, without further ado, we proudly present the William Pace show on CATV 
coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. He's 400 pound guy, a uh, black guy. Kind of an Al Sharpton hair situation. Yeah. Everyone wants to know. Very PowerPoint. Sweet graphics. Yes. <laughs> We're raising the bar with more commitment to educate, inform, encourage, inspire, empower, and help you. I got to be honest. So that's. I want to watch the entire Dan I know. Again I would right have been now. this. <laughs> that's obviously like been updated, but the original, you could see the old grainy footage. And yeah, yeah. One second cut between each one of them. That's updated. The, we need the to last somehow. Part. The last we need part. to somehow. Put that as like a top thing you can jump on uh, on our YouTube page. You know, whatever. Like that needs to be easily accessible. I think. You on the William Pace show? I feel like write that down, Rachel. I feel like if yes. Jasmine could see like one frame of you on the show. Play. I mean, we have a clip. Well, tell I, me. We were yeah, I saw this. Time. Oh, okay. Tell us, tell us what's coming up on uh, the Damn show. I'm coming up on 12, the Dan McDowell show. 12, Don't forget to tune in February 24th. That's a Wednesday. William Pace will need your support for yeah. muscular dystrophy. Okay. All right. I'm so the, right, so. the point <laughs> is the, uh, the point was the William Pace read. show open. Yeah. This guy made audio to lay over for, for our own open. Fantastic. And apparently is this a, a clay production really? Yeah. Yeah. Our second ever subby. Yeah, sub number two. Clay did not get number one, but he's a uh, a video wizard, and he put this together for us. The Dumb Zone through the years has been a beacon of light in the DFW Metroplex, <laughs> taking you to such destinations as Above Dan's Garage, the Alamo Draft House, Deuce Robinson's Family Farm, Paris, and several rich people's homes. There's always plenty of camp spins. Yes. Yeah. On the Dumb Zone podcast, some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like Drop Beth, Ted Emmerich, Haralabob Valgaris, Julie Dobbs, Sarah Heppola, Quincy Carter's voicemail, and former city council. <laughs> Councilmember Philip Kingston have appeared on the Dumb Zone podcast. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the Dumb Zone podcast, a no puppet production coming to you live via tape from the heart of DFW. Fantastic! That's amazing. That's Absolutely amazing. fantastic. Those are some stellar names, too. <laughs> God. I know. Yeah. It's not Congressman Tony Hall, but it's. <laughs> It's up there. It's so great. Great work. Yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. It's so cool to know other people who do great work. Like, we didn't do a damn thing for all of that. Yeah, and you know, the uh, weird okay. thing about it is, uh, <laughs> I guess I probably thought of this first whenever we were going through court. I still can't wrap my head around how so many smart, talented people with money want anything to do with us. <laughs> That's what all I of mean, us I mean, even him wondering. back there. Video man? Yeah. Yeah. Not you. Well, he's no, getting, not me. No, Rob's rich. He's getting free shirts and stuff. That's what he's in it for. It's weird, though. And they're not all right-wingy, so now he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all my... It's not all a gift card to my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in on that. Trophy bear. Yeah. I had one of those, by the way. So, uh, next... If Trump, we get back, my Trumpy some... Bear actually died in uh, Matt Birmingham's uh, car accident. Oh, well, that's awful. It was. Are you just trying to wrap your head around it? Yeah, I just I hate when you bring up something that's so sad like that. I gave him my yeah. Trumpy Bear um, as and a birthday your, gift and your varsity jacket, and it was mm. it was wearing my varsity uh, letter jacket. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's not That's the one so I had. Sad. But. That's a great one, though. That is a great Look one. Look at that hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you want to slide in? You want to give us a, a, a Boston Celtics-related Kemp spin? We want to cover this series from every angle that we can. Yeah, I think the <laughs> it's really, really weird that they are where they are. Like, you could wind it all the way back to the fact that I think it's curious that their GM used to be their coach. Is it Brad Stevens? Yeah. Okay. Like, the fact that Brad Stevens was, like, this hotshot up-and-comer, like, he's going to be the next Phil Jackson. And then just over the period of, like, three years, it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to coach anymore. And he wasn't old at all. And he hadn't been in the NBA that long. And do you think— He was in college. If you had a chance to pick, wouldn't that be a better job? GM? Yeah. Don't have to go on every trip. 
you don't have to go on all the trips. You don't have to do stuff day to day like that. You can make the same money. Maybe more sometimes. You can make a bunch of mistakes. Like if you, <laughs> if your coach that you you hire misses the playoffs, well, let's hire another coach. It's got to be that coach's fault. Man, I know I should have hired somebody different. Yeah. But you might get two or three cracks at it. You're very, very close. You're tight with the owner. Donnie was the GM of the Mavericks for like 25 years. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, they were good, but they weren't. I mean, they they ran once. through a few coaches. Uh, absolutely. And then, so, so just, if you had the choice, you are young, and you're like, hey, wait, let's just. Why don't I just be that? Because don't don't have to move every two years. He's 47 now. Yeah. So like, he quit coaching at the NBA level at the age of 43. And it was at the height of his NBA powers. He'd already been their coach for six, seven years. He was at Butler for six, seven years before that. Yeah, I give him like, credit. Yeah, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. Don't you get a private jet and girls at GM range? Like when you're on that versus head coach? I'm just thinking like Jerry Jones GM. Yeah, well, you get to borrow the owner's jet probably. You're, you're very close with the owner. Like that's... That's the owner's conduit. To I just realized I've never thought about the fact of Brad Stevens having a sexual bone in his body because he seems like the biggest dork. I've no, been. he's asexual. <laughs> I don't want to think of him having sex. Who but do you, who I do am now, though. About? I don't like it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the Ime Odoka thing was just super, super weird. Um, he was having an affair with a staffer. He was in a relationship with actress Nia Long. And I forgot about all that. I think he got caught like on a ring doorbell video. Gotta be careful. That's why I don't get ring. What's up with Boston coaches and ring videos? <laughs> the uh, Belichick video. Oh, that was so gross. I, I hate was, my eyeballs. There's for almost that. no way that was really him. Come on. Gross. You want to believe it? Yes. What was that? He was you didn't see this? Somebody was doing like a walk of shame outside of like a Boston. Uh, it wasn't like an apartment. It was a house. Okay. 6 a.m. Yeah, and it looked very similar to Bill Belichick. It's him. Did he have like a hoodie? He's no, he was no, shirtless. No, shirtless. Yeah. Great question. Okay, no shirtless. way. Yes. And he's like, I'm saying it's not him. He just he's rolled like, out of bed. He's, he's got to like get to practice. bailing quick. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> All right. It you looks got... a lot like him. I just don't believe there's any way he would have let that happen. Yeah, I can't believe that's not the only guy in Boston that looks like that. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a good counter. That's a great point. So uh, if you recall, like when <clears throat> the Ime Odoka thing happened, it was like, oh, he's never going to work again. Oh, yeah. It's very similar to uh, like- Nobody would touch him. It was Me Too height, right? Absolutely the height of it. Yeah. yeah. It was 20... But had he just been to the finals? Did 20... you say that? Yes. It was 2022. Okay. 2022, 2023 offseason. And it was like a- Nobody will ever hire him again. It was very similar to your uh, contention that you had with Corby regarding Roger Goodell and Ray Rice. Yes, he's yes. Like, oh, he's going to get banned. That that Roger Goodell, right, will have to quit because of the embarrassment. And then the Rockets hired Ime Udoka like six months later. Yeah, and in fact, at first, didn't they just like suspend him? They did for a minute, but then the heat just kept getting hotter. So and Joe Mazzulla was also like a long time uh, assistant, like head coach in waiting. So I think they were kind of like, do we really need to take the heat on this? Yeah. Over this guy. And then like kind of a basic situation. They uh, there was there, yeah. Ooh. It just they thought you know we can replace this role. Yeah, he was there. He knows it. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so uh, they they just bring in Joe Mazzula, and they haven't skipped a beat. And Emo Odoka has another job with the Rockets. Which could probably happen with a lot of uh, head coaches. I think especially if you have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown yeah. and Al Horford. And, I mean, maybe even just having Brad Stevens as your GM. Like, you're going to be fine. But I still think it's weird that for most of the history of professional sports— a head coach simply having an affair, getting them fired, was the most ridiculous thing you could have ever come up with. Now, didn't Shams or somebody at the time say a lot more is going to come out at, like, 
we kind of thought it might have been more like, like an sexual assault. assault. Yeah. yeah, but I don't really think it ever did. <clears throat> it was just that she worked for the team. Yeah, but if it's consensual, who cares? It's so stupid. Well, I mean, if it's assault, then you kind of yeah, yeah, I mean, but, yeah. Consensual but, 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 but if it's not, I mean, yeah, I don't but... think that exists. Uh, Ask the, Trevor Bauer. The issue was whether or not <laughs> fair point. The issue was that she worked for the team. Okay, and so there's like a power dynamic in play, and is you he, can't s where you eat. Is he uh, <laughs> somehow coercing her with like uh, you know the offer of like oh you're gonna get a better job or even just that the implication exactly yeah but Which, again sometimes for you like, gotta use the implication <laughs> for most of like the history of sports that is not the sort of thing that got the head coach of a team like the Boston Celtics fired. No, I mean, for most of the history of sports, it would have got her fired. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it just like, all of a sudden it was like, oh, this guy's unhirable. He's fired. Yeah. that. It, and the league was like going to blackball him. And then the weirdest part is like how every single time this happens, people just forget about it. Well, it's almost <laughs> the Kyrie thing. Yeah. The Kyrie retweet or whatever, the blacklisted, the, the anti Semitic yeah. movie. And at the time, it seemed like the worst thing that's ever happened. And then it kind of, a couple like, months happened. Like, what, if, what if we gave you $200 million? Like, but at first, like, LeBron was really against it. And, yeah. like, I can't support this. But then, like, he turned, like, a politician and was like, hey, wait, why is he being. Still subjected to this. And yes, and now Kyrie is like the darling. Yeah. He is the darling of the NBA right now. He absolutely is. And it's weird because it's not like, I don't know, he's not recovering from cancer or something. He's, you know, just he's, was kind He's of, recovering from his own like, he was kind, Yes, he was kind of an a-hole. Like I told you in Cleveland, that was the, the MO on him. He was a jerk to everybody. Yeah. And now he's kind of been like on this redemption tour, and it's like, you know what? I know young me, it's, it, it, I had a lot of this going on, and I, you know, now I just realize, and, and, and we're all like, yes, yes, okay. But it's different now. It is different now, and I love it. I used to hate his guts so hard, and Absolutely. now I'm like, how is he this darling? Because you win. We get a lot of emails. We got one last night about this. Like somebody's just like, I can't believe you guys are just buying all the bullshit this guy's selling. I'm like, well, I mean, he it's does not. Seem, it's believable. He seems different. Matt says you're my sports cynicism leaders. You used to treat him like Aaron Rodgers. You should be laughing every time he says something doesn't reflect his true self. His ridiculous answers aren't mature. They're just winning. He blew up the Cavs. He bailed on Boston. He controlled Brooklyn and blew it up. And now he's a different person. Things are going well. The Mavs are winning. That's the only difference. He has not shown himself to be a leader until things aren't going well, and then he doesn't turn into a selfish child. What was he saying like that? He's like the people in The Bachelor, falling in love in a paradise where you have no worries. Then you get back to reality and break up in two weeks. Please go back to mocking him. More dumb zone from Matt. (laughs) Well, Kyrie even said it's warmer here and he can ground here because he's a big, like, you know, cerebral dude. So Yes, we should make fun of that. He's right. No, yeah. but not. I'm I'm now nodding like yeah yeah it is warmer See? here. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe yeah. you need touch grass. Yeah, it is good for you. Grounding is good for you. Also, uh, that's a real thing, by the way. It what is does a that real mean? thing. <clears throat> like your feet being on like actual soil is good for your like grass. Your brain. It recharges big, you. Big therapy thing. Oh, I, I probably can't tell you the last time my feet have touched grass. So does that mean like when he was in Brooklyn, he's just living in a concrete concrete Basically. jungle? Yeah, you can't ground on cement. Same in Boston. You're yeah. like grass maintenance guy. I'm not walking in through it barefoot. Oh, oh you barefoot. have to. You're supposed you gotta to go you barefoot. Have to. Yeah. You'll love it. I don't You'll need to be it. outside barefoot. So <laughs> Oh, you will. You'll love it. No, <laughs> Get on really? feet, bro. I do think that like the one thing you should mention <laughs> is that uh like we talked about it a couple weeks ago. When Durant is requesting a trade out of Phoenix or like a let's figure out what we're doing in you know in Phoenix with this roster after he's already engineered the entire thing around him it does to me make me think like Brooklyn was not entirely Kyrie's fault he's just surrounded with bad friends that's right it hasn't been his fault at all ever I love it see Kyrie swell LeBron right is my favorite player of all time 
but I think he could be a difficult person to be around. He yeah. absolutely can, and it rubbed off on him. And he was just a young kid. He didn't know any better. Right, that's what he was taken from. I don't know if that many people died in the Holocaust. Look, you weren't there. <laughs> uh, could be too far, but we don't have any too far My here. point is yes. I'm willing to alibi for just about everything that Kyrie Irving has done up to this right. point if we can get this dub. Could you imagine that? No. Definitely that many people died, by the way. Probably more. Yeah, nice Probably save. more. It, uh, I don't know that it was. What? Oh, oh, okay. Thanks, Jake. Oh, awesome. Thanks Way to go, Jake. Thanks, Thanks for bringing good. up that now, repressed I think that's memory. A funny to be clear, joke now. she cool. said, was in. That's right. She did, we she don't know which side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. I don't know. Her I, last name is Schmidt. I think it's. I think it's... It's very weird how we just do these 180s on athletes, but... Depends on the athlete. We don't... <laughs> Nobody really wants to know like what they're really about, you know. Like Dirk is a one of one, where you meet the guy and you're like, okay, <clears throat> this is like actually how he is. He's really, really cool. But it's funny because that- like I've had conversations with athletes that I thought were super, super cool, and they said some stuff to me like behind the scenes, and I'm like, that's a really disgusting thing that you just said. Oh my gosh! Like Holocaust <laughs> yeah. stuff, or that was a joke. Uh, but the thing is, even when they were losing last year, they didn't even make the playoffs. People that worked with the Mavs were like, he's a great dude. Yeah. He's trying to get money. He was. At that point. Yeah. No, I was. in his contract year. Why are you being so cynical? I was as trying to keep out grounded. on him as possible. You're Mr. Kyrie. After, Touch grass. After uh, <laughs> your reports from Cleveland. Because that, see, that's the other thing, too, is that, like, even though like Luca bailed on an interview with us, I do think he treats the people who work there really well. Especially for a guy who's in his early 20s. Like I've heard from people who work there that are like he's pretty cool dude. Like he's very very polite and kind to everybody. Yeah. So, I don't know. The fact that Kyrie is now, I guess, cool. At least he didn't have an affair with a female employee. Ooh, good point. That's right. Then we'd have to get rid of him. It's a weird story, man. The Celtics are a strange team. And that's like we haven't even mentioned the K, uh, the KP thing. Oh, yeah. See, he's forgettable too. Can I use mid? <laughs> You've used it. it too many times. Yeah, we, but what if it's my quota. thing? We have a mid quota today. Okay. Like that's a, that's a crazy uh, narrative arc, you know? Just the fact that Luca and KP are meeting in the finals. Yeah. Like after we spent so much time debating whether or not they could work together and was the trade worth it, you got to convey the pick. Did they like Picks. each other? Yeah, exactly. Did they high five after that shot? Did you remember I, that? I we were doing that. freaking body language analysis over every single interaction between the two of these dudes, and now they're going to be in the finals against each other. It's really weird. Of all the teams you could play, like outside of the Knicks. This is probably the weirdest one. Maybe the Pacers, but it's up there. Yeah, there were a lot of good options to <laughs> for who they would face this year, actually. Because I think a Carlisle thing would have been awesome. Yeah. That would have been a good one. Uh, Jalen Brunson, of course. But that, there wouldn't have been an animosity with Jane, Jalen Brunson, I don't think. But I think there could be animosity. Maybe Luca thinks KP sucks. I saw somebody talking about this the other day. Like, will he get booed? KP? Yeah. Why? Because I love the guy. Yeah. But I do think that, like... They did have to give up a lot to... No, I think it's more that there's just, like, a, re- a residual feeling among Ma- among Mavericks fans where they're like, this guy's a pussy. Yeah. Hi, it's me. I think that. <laughs> yeah. But I think he was might, awesome. That's what Luca might think, too. I think he was giving it everything he had as much as he could. But I do think that the fan base... A significant portion of it is like, this guy bailed on us. Like, he gave up. He had that crazy story, too, remember? About, like, the Russian hookers and all kinds of weird stuff going on. Y'all don't remember this with Chris Oh, yeah. oh I remember. Yeah. It was wild. He got sued. Yeah. And then it just kind of went away. While he was here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it, the incident occurred whenever he was right. in New York, but then it came out. Right around something his, with his brothers his and stuff? Extension. Yeah. Well, I mean... 
that happened the same day. What the trade and the extension? Pretty much. I mean, it didn't happen until the next summer, but they said it that day. They were like, they they didn't make this. that trade to right. They traded for him in February to they just look at him for a, him. a month. But yeah, there was a weird female situation. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to see if it's even up or if they wiped it. What's with females? I don't causing know. Causing all these problems yeah. we with do. our sports teams. <laughs> all right, let's work in a quick break here. The dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up. And let's uh, actually talk about Frankel and Frankel. Let's do it. Uh, 214 all threes. Now, don't just call this uh, law firm for any old thing. Like, if you're getting sued by your former employer, I don't think they're your guys. No. They might be able to, like, point you in the right direction, but... So if I just, like, keep hitting three, like, how many times do I have to hit it? Well, start with 214 or 817 and then keep hitting three. Okay. Just until you hear a ring. Okay. Uh, You'll talk to a partner, and if you're in an accident, that's the main thing. Personal injury, right? Yes. That's what they're all about. Yes. Uh, Gene Burkett will actually talk to you. One of the Frankels will actually talk to you. And uh, they will fight for your rights. A lot of times those insurance companies, they're kind of worried about their pocket. It's uh, it's a daunting situation whenever you get involved in a car accident or any sort of like injury type situation. You need somebody you can trust. And I suggest Frankel and Frankel. Yeah, they've been around a long time. They've helped uh, many, many people. So over over a dozen. So if Dan okay. rear ends you, <laughs> if Dan or Blake with their that would never happen because I would just drive right past you. driving styles. No, uh, injure you, then there's only one number to call. But if you get in a wreck, well, there's actually two. Right, <laughs> but if you get in a wreck and you're in DFW on the, one of the most dangerous highways in America, what number do you call, Jasmine? Four or eight one seven, all threes. Right, not well, two one four and eight one seven. I wouldn't put the two one four and the eight one seven. I would pick one. That's why I said or. I just wanted to see if Jasmine was listening, and she actually was <laughs> this time. Yeah, which is incredible. I know. All right, good people. There are times in life you wish you had a do-over. If you're in a wreck, make the smart choice right away. Frankel and Frankel, feared by the insurance companies. Call Frankel first. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. Give me one of these. The Dumb Zone. 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 I thought we said all that Frankel stuff. I think I should uh, switch back to Legacy Sigs. Because my voice sounds so good in those clips. Yeah, it really does. Is that from cigarettes? I I was sick, but cigarettes make you sick. So, ergo. It's tough to start smoking, though. Uh, it's a lot easier than you think. Is it really? <laughs> well, it depends on what you're smoking, though. I feel like cigarettes, it's different than the other stuff. Crack? <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. Okay, we have some stuff we want to get to that we don't really have a name for this segment, but I want to. Uh, we're going to keep previewing the Mavs because I got a Kyrie thing for you. But do you want to lead us off here? And and we have audio that could be enhanced by video. Yeah. So we're working in working it in today when we are on YouTube. Yeah, I had a I had a group chat. It's, it's a new platform. I had a group chat segment ready to go for you. Um, so let me just play one thing from it. And video man, this is going to be three and four. And group chat. Yeah. The last true. The last bastion of. Men, when when men were men, but you know what's true though is that women do this also. What do we do? Like you act differently in your group chat. Definitely. Well, it depends on well, yes and no. That's a blanket. Like, statement. do you have a group chat with your really close friends that you can just say anything? Oh yeah, I've got like six of them. Yeah, and I th- I think I told you guys before. Uh, if you uh, excuse my language here, um. My wife is in one that's called, like, because you label it, you know? Yes. You can label it. Oh, I've got a ton of labeled ones. Yeah. What, what are hers? Uh, there's one that's called, like, cunt mufflers. Yes. Okay, we've got one that's muffins instead of mufflers. It's sea muffins. They love yeah. the C word. 
Yeah. It's a great word. Unless we're yelling it at him, and then now all of a sudden, oh, oh, okay, well, but in what that. context? Yeah. Ridiculous. But in what context? Yeah. So this came across my I time. I want equality. <laughs> That's right. Everybody can do what, what, what makes them happy. So the funny thing about, uh, if we're going to say blanket statements, the funny thing about the internet mm-hmm. is um, it also, it comes in like waves or acts where you see a video and then everyone responds to it and then there's an investigation into it. You know, you can kind of follow the life of the video. And so this first clip um, is a TikTok and uh, just go ahead and fire it. Yeah. Um, that, oh, hold on, wrong one. Play three. I know what's going on here. Have you seen this one? Yes. Of course. Describe it. Shoot me. Okay, so this, um, so this, uh, I don't know, what, what is she, like 30? Yeah, she's like late 20s, early 30s. Some influencer. And yeah. the, the caption, she's, she's making cupcakes. Yeah, while crying. Yes. And she's crying. And the caption says, being a single mom is making your own birthday cake on your birthday so that your babies can feel happy they are singing to you. And when I first saw it, I did feel kind of bad for her. I wanted to comfort her. Really? See, why give me your business? Who cares? And, oh. and, and the See, women- They're their own worst enemies. The women that have seen this hate it because I think females hate when other females cry on camera. No, it's not that. It's just I'm sick of hearing about your crap. Who cares? Okay, maybe okay, that's it isn't clearly a you know you're an adult. You're yes. worried about your birthday. Thank you. And Get your also, shit uh, you like set this this phone up like. Yes. Okay. Yep. It, it, Play the audio, and there's a really sad song to it too. And <laughs> she looks so pathetic. <laughs> right. So obviously, I mean, I could figure. The reason she's getting dragged. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because she's no all more. hot and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's why we're sympathetic to her. Otherwise, Are we? she set up um, those who want to uh, to do stuff to her <laughs> are sympathetic to her. But otherwise, she just she, set up she set the uh, that camera up. She set up the camera. To yeah. cry. This is so staged. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then I started crying now. Now I'm going to start crying like once I got the lighting right and the angle cuz I had to go check and make sure and right. And let's say it's not fake. In the middle of your crying episode you think I need to video this. Yeah. So there's a lot of bad things a part of this, yes. but in the moment I did sympathize for her because she's hot. Um, no, because no, she's is single mom. I get the Y'all kid, are full of shit. The kids. <laughs> give me a break. You got to do stuff for your kids. I was actually. And if they uh, do want to wish you a happy Primarily birthday, raised by a single mother. As was I, Jake. <laughs> so I really sympathize oh, okay. with that. Okay. Well, okay. empathize? Sympathize. I, I, don't, I never have known the difference. Maybe I was in my feels. I don't know. I just, I, I felt bad don't for say it that. in the moment. Come on. No. If I can't it's a say part of everyday you can't say in your You're feels. not doing in my feels. No. You're 50. I'm not 50. <laughs> the f- so a couple days later. Some people start to respond to this TikTok. Yeah. Saying, hey, sweetie, uh, if you were married, you'd be doing the same thing too. Unless you were married to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. In which case, I would be helping. What, out. she'd be making her own birthday cake? Yes. Oh, okay. Out of the house, <laughs> like I do now and loving my family. <laughs> okay, so that was act two. I'd uh, buy her one from Baskin Robbins. Act two is like, well, Great husband, cakes. Yeah. a husband is yeah. not going to make your cake. Uh, act two was also, hey, you're making cupcakes, not your own cake. It is a weird move to be like, hey, it's my birthday. I'm going to make 12 cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's for her kids, remember? They're so sad. And so our final act is her ex-husband weighs in. I don't think it's the final one. Really? But go ahead. Okay. Let's play the next video. So it's the same video. Same video. Before. And then here, here he comes. So I've been sent this video a lot over the last few days. Um, people asking my thoughts and my comments on it. And before anyone says, oh, you don't know her situation or, you know, you don't know what she's going through. Well, I do because I lived it. Um, I'm her ex-husband. And um, right now I have full custody of our kids. This is our parent agreement. As you can see, I have all weekdays and weekends time sharing with the kids. All at holiday academic breaks. 
and for her to get any rights back to the kids, these are the things that she needs to do. And yes, child support, she owes that. It's up to over $21,000. So Whoa. she's a mother a and she must be doing doesn't great. pay child support. Showed a mugshot of her. She was done arrested for check fraud, and during that hearing, it turned out that it was found that she stole almost a million dollars from another guy. And also, she fake cancer in the past. These are scans <laughs> that she would send and post on her page uh, before. We sure are piling on. So, how hot is she now? She does not totally. uh, A lot more. Yeah, she doesn't she embezzled have... <laughs> a million dollars? You kidding me? Faking <laughs> cancer? Hell yeah. No! Let, okay, yeah. Let, let's go. Let's She'll go. do anything. <laughs> Let's go item by item. Doesn't have custody of her kids. She's in that house alone. So, well, yeah. Crying. That makes her even hotter. <laughs> she might have had them that night. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. But you could have made these I'm cupcakes. trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> All right. And then she got arrested for check fraud, to which she stole a million dollars. Boys. Then, uh, yeah. The only thing bad about that is she got arrested. But she learned a lot in the process. And then uh, fake cancer. <laughs> Again, willing to go the extra mile. The I only think, thing I'll say is she had a hot mugshot. That was a good looking mugshot. It was a good She's it attractive. was a good looking mugshot. I think uh <laughs> faking cancer is obviously very strange, but like having fake imagery is even weirder. <laughs> yeah, like where do you even get that? I don't know. But I, I respect the griff though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. That's uh I think she ended up material. posting like a, like a response video to it, like saying that he was a Scientologist. Yes. You're aware oh, now too. she's going to yep. throw shade at him. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. Now we've gotten on him. There's an yeah, update. yeah. Yep. He's like a Scientologist. and that Controlling and lying and abusive weird. Abusive. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But and she's then, not like, denying the faking cancer. That part so was we give curiously her left out of her <laughs> response. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, and then he had to come out and be like, I'm actually not a Scientologist. Uh, she made that up. Okay. So... So we continue to follow this story? I think yeah, it I seems love. like a really healthy thing for your kids. Yep. They're probably just thriving right now. <laughs> Why are these people a thing, though? Why do I care? Because she filmed herself crying. Yeah, and because it went viral. What and kind it, of cupcakes? And it's in now in way? Blake's uh, group chat. I think they're pick flick cupcakes. <laughs> uh, what Anyone? does that mean? <laughs> no? You? Uh-uh. Nobody gets it? Pick I flick? think I might know what it is, but I don't want to say it. You don't if you think it's sexual yeah. in nature at all. Okay. No, it's uh, okay. from the movie Election. Tracy Flick. Oh, okay. Did a oh, bunch that of cupcakes. is a random. When was that movie out? Like 20 something years ago? Yeah, pretty recently. Yeah. <laughs> Sick reference. <laughs> Sick reference. What have you brought to the table for us today, Jasmine? Okay, do y'all want the misogyny VHS tapes first or the porn addiction with an Amazon tribe? We want you to pick. Mm, let's, start with the, let's start with the, the Amazon tribe. So I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but a fella named Elon Musk mm -hmm. has uh, his company called Starlink or whatever, which are these little basically satellite dishes with like crazy, insane internet speed power, whatever. I believe they actually uh, helped Russia invade Ukraine. Yes. So these things are monsters. Well, now they're causing porn addictions mm -hmm. because... He sends these things over to this Amazon tribe, the Maruba tribe, Marubo tribe, uh, nine months ago. And he's like, we're going to send you this. It's going to be, yeah, here's the photo there. You see that tree stump with the Starlink on it mm -hmm. right next to the hut? That's what we're working with. So anyway, nine months ago, he sends these over there thinking, okay, you guys can have access to us to, you know, be able to communicate for healthcare and all kinds of stuff, right? Here you are. We're going to open your minds to what's going on outside of this little hut that you live in. Well, evidently, these guys developed a massive porn addiction, so much so that the elders of this tribe are like, hey, guys, we're not hunting, fishing, or gathering anymore because you guys are in your huts doing stuff to your puds. So this is what's going on. So thank you, Starlink. It is kind of awesome how universal the idea of the second you get access to the it's internet. It's porn! Exactly. Like, it doesn't matter. White, black, purple, brown. You're in junior high. Junior high or like you're, you're 90. Elder, el, elder uh, leader yeah. of a tribe. The or... second they give you the internet, uh, the internet, you're like, I'm jacking off. <laughs> and I'm not going to stop until someone makes me. That's awesome. Don't you wish you could have not been with them, but just to see them see like, oh, manicured women. 
Yeah, oh. just just <laughs> all that they're point. discovering there. Oh, fake breasts. Like, yes, oh. you went from your whole life to none to all of it Yeah, in two seconds. <laughs> yeah, and it's like- That would be quite jarring. And like Elon's like, I bet they'll be looking at Encyclopedia Britannica. Just bring a man from the 70s uh, time traveling to know. And I don't know what tribe people are doing, I would imagine missionary, but then they go to double pin videos. That's, That's gotta be- They're not just doing missionary, dude. Quite they're doing boring. crazier stuff than we're doing. In the you Amazon? Think? I oh, think so. yeah. I think so, yeah. They're tribal people. Because they don't have the porn. That was racist. Yeah. But <laughs> I you know, do like th- the tribal tats. I, I do think that Dan is right that I don't think that they're doing like Mormon. I don't think they're soaking. <laughs> Whoa. For example, you're familiar with that? Soaking is not what you think. Explain it to her. Explain it to me. Um. So there's a thing that. I don't even know if it's actually for real or not. I think it, it became popular on TikTok for a brief period of time, which that like Mormon kids at BYU because they're Oh, not, I do know this. Yeah, they're not allowed to have sex. Yes, I do know this. So they would kind of like insert. Yes. And then like uh, a friend would jump up and down yes. on the bed. Yep. I know this because I went right. to college with a uh, girl that was a more like devout Mormon, mm. but she was a slut. And Jeez. so she, wore- I, I would literally never use that word. Really? No. You don't like, but she would drop the C bomb. I, I don't. I haven't used the S word in a long time. Really? And I don't and plan on it. Jake's a complicated onion to peel back. Yeah, I know. You really. So are. the other thing is, uh, in addition to their porn addiction, they also got like super addicted to social media. For real? For real. Because they're repressed. And they like, st- like she said, stopped working. And so. Elon took all these things back? That's uh, even worse. I did. Uh, that's even <laughs> worse. How do you do that? No, he didn't take those back. Oh. But I will quote this tribesman, Sanamu Marabo, said they're, they're really worried that these people are becoming so lazy and adopting what he calls, quote, the ways of the white people. Mm-hmm. So we whites are lazy. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I'm not going to argue with him. Yeah, sure. But I do think it's very funny, again, that it's just universal. It's, it's, it's really not that dissimilar when you find out about, like... Women report that the situation they have... The- uh, like, rampant STDs in, uh, like, old folks' homes. Yes! It's so gross! <laughs> like, the second they all just get put there, they're like, all right, what are we going to do? Well, yeah, why not? Do you remember the PSAs they used to run on those? Oh, yeah. It was so uncomfortable. Really? Yes! Yeah. Was your grandpa scoring in, at the home? No, but I mean, <laughs> I did have a couple conversations with him where I was like, look, man, I mean, you're still like alive. Like you're a good looking dude. Do you, you asked him? I mean, I was like, Hey, you know, there's some ladies down, but he wouldn't leave his room though. Mm. Kind of a sad situation where, uh, some old people like literally can't move on when they, uh, yeah. When the other one goes. Yeah. Mm. But apparently some can to a degree, <laughs> yeah. where, they, to a degree <laughs> where they get chlamydia. Ugh, gross. <laughs> he was not one of those. Uh, that's too there bad. There is a whole Blue Herods thing, though. Yeah. It's, it's a, a real genre. I mean, it's like you can look up research on this. They have problems. Uh, <laughs> like outbreaks. It's as so far gross. as the blue hair, does the uh, carpet match the? Ugh. I saw him working on that. In his mind over I can there for see a the second. smoke. Just yeah, yeah. Like, where do I go? Isn't with it this? fun? Old carpet. <laughs> There's something here. So yeah, there you go. Amazon people are out watching porn. Thanks, Elon. I mean, I feel like they deserve to to experience the rest of the world just like we do. Yeah, for sure. Why not? That's called. No uh, what do they call it when we killed all the Indians? It's like uh, not progress, but genocide. Awful? Uh, no, no, no. What they called it at the time, it was like, um, it was like progress. The word is like progress, but it's not that. It's, it's, uh, civilized, we've civilized you. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. But what if they're watching like Marge Simpson and Peter Griffin? Yeah. That would, would prefer that not be the case. They would totally, then they would probably just throw that Starlink away and say, this is not <laughs> accurate. A con- continuity here. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> cross pollinate worlds. What else? Okay, so I found this, okay, VHS promo tape. This was by, do you remember way back in the day, Sheer Indulgences, the pantyhose line that women would wear? 
There was it like legs. Vaguely familiar to Okay, me. sheer indulgences. Everybody's mom wore these. So this came from like 1988. This was an actual tape that they were circulating internally with the women of their company because God forbid they knew how to sell anything or be business women because they were just too stupid to do anything. So we're going to roll with the first one, which is, hold on, I have it in my notes here, Video Man. Which one? Oh, the business one. Okay. So this first video is explaining how women just can't be trusted alone on business lunches. They're just too stupid to go business on lunch. Take a look. Women report that the situation they have the most problem with is a business lunch. Some women just plain don't know what to do. <laughs> you, oh, I'm glad you could make it. Did you have any trouble finding it? No, no. Oh, oh uh, sorry. <laughs> Let me get this stuff out of your way here. You know, she I moves never, her back. I uh, realized that this place was here. Well, it's a little out of the way, but the prices are wonderful, and so are the tacos. You know, that's, that's another thing. I'm really not that crazy about Mexican food. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll find something you like. Uh, waiter, uh, would you like a drink? Uh, um, the margaritas are wonderful. Oh. Perrier with a twist, that'll be fine. Oh, all right. So these uh, pushy waiter. broads are waiter. always telling their husbands what they have to do. Uh, do you think you could come over here, please, and this time bring a menu? Thanks. Jeez. Anyway, how'd you like the project? Maybe we could talk about that over lunch. Could we order now? My uncle hired me. <laughs> But then I needed more money, so I went back to my dad. Company car. Okay, I have a company yeah. car. She's smoking. Car. Nice car, too. It's a Ford uh, Escort, but it's nice. That's great. I don't have one yet. <laughs> so Ford what Escort. do you really think for chances? Thank you. Oh, no, I got this. I got it. My company's okay. going to pay okay. for it. I'm not. Well, well, what about if I called you today at 3? I mean, I mean, is that enough time for you to... Uh, what's 10% of 27? Why don't you... Leaving 15%. Is Just, that what you leave in a place like this? 15? Well, the waiter <laughs> the lady, good, sir, number one, who can't do math. Okay, 15. Do you have a quarter? <laughs> and her bag is huge. Of her this, is, this was a real video that circulated. I feel like... telling women not to act like this. I want to say this. As a guy who I would say I grew up in the 80s, that's very accurate for that's who my mom was. She'd be smoking. Mm -hmm. She's very pushy. She's mean to waitresses. I think she needed that video. If she was now, she's freshly divorced. Mm -hmm. She's going to get out there. She might need this video. Mm -hmm. There's just like kind of stereotypes. There's always some root in it, right? There's somewhere. Yeah. Like I feel like there was po a possible slight need for this video. I think so, but also the fact that they set it up that it's very the overt. biggest the biggest problem women are experiencing is these business lunches. My God. Yeah. Uh, I also want to bind, uh, wind it back a little bit and ask, how are they selling pantyhose? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the pantyhose on that? <laughs> like, I mean, I don't it know. It didn't come up at all. No. Because we're so stupid, evidently. We don't even know what product we're selling. We're just, you know, knocking back you don't know math. and drinking. You don't smoke, know math. you drink at lunch. You're ready to give 10% on a tip. We're ready to give 10%, but the Ford Escort. what's the Escort. Easy, easier math than that? <laughs> the Ford Escort. Okay, this next clip is basically <laughs> it's women- It's a nice car, though. <laughs> it is a nice car, though. With two lunches and two drinks for 27 bucks. Can't yeah, but it. in the 80s, that's still expensive, right? And then you have to tip whatever 10% of 27 <laughs> bucks is. Nobody could figure that out. Nobody could ever, ever possibly figure that out. Thank God he was there. Okay, so, uh, hey, women, you need vocal etiquette to not sound so stupid, according to sheer indulgences. Mr. Jones, I was wondering, is that report going to be due on Tuesday? Oh, great, Mr. Jones, I'll get it done for Breathy. you. No problem. A breathy cheerleader shows three things. Someone who's not as intelligent as she wants to appear, someone who's rushed, and someone who's exceptionally awkward. There should be no problem with this. I want to know why the reports were not done in time. I want to know where they are. I want to know why they were not done correctly. This person shows as someone who's very resistant, that was called very the negative, tense jaw and uncooperative. Clipper. Well, I was going to get that report done as soon as possible, but uh, hopefully it will be on Tuesday, okay? What this person shows is unfortunately someone who's unintelligent, someone who has no energy, and someone who could not totally complete a job. There should be no problem in getting your order processed. Thank you. Someone who's tight-lipped is someone who is not cooperative, someone who doesn't want to work well with others, and someone who is very negative in their approach to communication. I was wondering if I could get to report <laughs> to you. Traffic on jam in the mouth. Because I've been very busy right now, That's and our computer meeting. system is down. Is Thank you like very much. When there's a traffic jam in the mouth, mouth, the word yeah. sounds garbled, so I sound confused, disoriented. I sound that I'm not sure of myself. <laughs> could you please get that to... 
Mr. Jones and <laughs> Slow train would you that please train. do that for me? Okay. Thanks. The slow train indicates to us a woman who doesn't have her thoughts together, is unprepared, unprofessional, perhaps not real intelligent. Traffic jam hey. mouth. These things aren't bad, I think, for, you know, a 14-year-old. And I think that's the case here. We are treating women like children. Yeah, Dan. Right? Yes, Dan. That's the whole bit. Yeah. These little, you just don't understand. Like us men do. Let me make a video for you. Our small brains right, can yeah. handle it. We it have is, to teach teach thirty year old women. It is kind of interesting though, if you think about like just the evolution of the the genders, the fact that like women just weren't really in the workplace until the sixties or seventies. Right. And, and then they sort of just had to figure it out. Yeah. While while, while for the most part <laughs> many people didn't want them there. <laughs> Unless you were Murphy Brown. Now that's a sick that's reference. That's a sick reference. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> High five. Murphy Brown. <laughs> or Working Girl. Mm. That was like an 80s movie, right? I think Anybody so. know about that? Don Johnson? Mm-hmm. Not Don Johnson. Whoever he was married to. Oh, Melanie Griffith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys are vibing. Yeah, yeah. we are. We're 80s humping. <laughs> That it for those? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, no, well, no, no, hold on. No, Wait. those are great. No, no, no I thought that was good. Th- I, thanks, I feel Dan. like Dan is... No, um, I didn't know no, if you had another one. No, you disparaged the woman's bit. That's fine. Um, but we do have a mashup. And I just is, disparage women, not, I, <laughs> not their bits. <laughs> and I cannot take credit for this. This is Rob's gold. Uh, Rob, what is this? Let her rip. This is a wonderful, unique mashup of what you just heard, but with a little bit of flair that you might uh, remember. A ballerina pose conveys an image of, I'm really not that aggressive. Then she bends over and pulls down her pennies. I've been conditioned to look pretty, to look nice, and to stay in my place. The slouching narcoleptic is someone who (laughs) just has no energy. But all you could see was cellulite hanging in pubic hair. (laughs) Veining of emotion we get from our narcoleptic is, this person has no energy, and this person is really using her stress in a real negative way. Our soldier girl is one showing a tremendous sense of tension and judgment. She needs psychotropic medication. Our bouncing bunny has a tendency to really never get you the opinion that she's ever listening to you. She pulls out her breasts and she's juggling them. Look like she's about to fall over. Is this person really going to handle the responsibility that I need her to do? Our bouncing bunny comes across as nervous, ineffective, and horribly immature. This woman obviously had lost her damn mind. So there you go. (laughs) Okay. That's awesome. That was the guy from Houston upset about the teacher. Yeah. Oh, that was gold. How about we do our last of today basketball Segment. Two, three, four. Preview the NBA Finals. Ba, 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 basketball, give me, give me, give me the ball because I'm gonna dunk it. Ba, 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 basketball, give me, give me, give me the ball because I'm gonna dunk it. Yeah. So, um, I was going to talk about why Kyrie is hated in Boston. Okay, because we're going to be watching, uh, you know, Kyrie get booed. You would think pretty heavily tonight in Boston. Yeah, the t-shirts are uh, they're moving. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. So like we we kind of just know the surface level. Kyrie, you know, blew up Boston, and then he demanded out of Cleveland and the Nets, and you know, but why? Okay, so August twenty second, twenty seventeen is the day he was traded to Boston. For a bunch of players, an unprotected first-round pick. And I remember thinking at the time as a Cavs fan, they didn't get enough. They got three players and an unprotected first-round pick. But Kyrie Irving was awesome. Yeah, I mean, they like, just they had just won a title. You got thinking, is he a franchise player? Like, and he was thinking that, too. <laughs> like, yeah. And he, he hit the game-winning shot in 16 and then hurt in 17. Is that right? 
That sounds right. But he also had, well, no, it was Kevin Love who had the stop. But Kyrie hit the shot, though. Yeah, LeBron had the block. The block, the chase down block. Kevin Love had a stop. Kyrie had the shot. Yeah. Yeah. So they already had Al Horford. They had just signed Gordon Hayward. Which at the time. They had Tatum. It was a, well, he was like 19, but yeah. Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart. And it looked like now we had Kyrie as the leader of this. And uh, many, many championships will follow. So the next year, or that uh, season, they actually ended up facing the Cavs in the Western, Con- excuse me, the Eastern Conference Finals. And Kyrie was uh, injured, so he didn't play in that series at all. Throughout the year, he averaged 24 and a half points a game. They had a 55 and 27 record, second in the East. Uh, but then he had knee surgery and missed the playoffs. But Boston was still pretty good. And they got all the way to Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Finals. And that's where we have a little more controversy with Kyrie. Because Kyrie just didn't even go to the game. I do recall that. He was recovering from nasal surgery. (laughs) Danny Ainge, the GM back then, said Kyrie had a deviated septum and had surgery on that. So I don't think he wanted to be seen. He's a good-looking guy. He can't ruin his movie career. So he tried to be funny Mm. about it. But the point is, that seems like a surgery you can kind of have whenever. Yeah. Um, But it was scheduled right before Game 7, and then he doesn't sit there with his teammates. So there's a sour taste in the Boston fans' mouths uh, after that, I guess. And However... October 4th, 2018. So as the next season starts, they had kind of a season ticket holder event. And they were talking about, like, uh, they were looking up at, you know, I don't know, they had one of their media guys, uh, and they were looking up at the the rafters and all the things that were hanging and the the banners and all that. That's what you call them. You got there. Bangers. uh, (laughs) Banners. Uh, Anyway, here... Here's what Kyrie said then. Kyrie, how important is it to see number 11 up there one day? It's, uh, it's quite important, and uh, I'm, I appreciate that scout I joined in, but I shared it with some of my teammates as well as the organization and everyone else in Boston. If you guys will have me back, I plan on re-signing here next year. Boom! So, I appreciate it. So, uh, we forgot all about that nasal surgery, not sitting on the bench. How important is it to sit on the bench anyway, right? That's all just window dressing. In hindsight, like, I know that that was six years ago, but I find it really weird that he would have ever said that. Yeah. Like, that just doesn't Doesn't seem like him Mm -hmm. at all. Whether he wanted to be there or not. Like, that's just a weird thing to just come out and say. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, it hurts your negotiating power, but not in the NBA, right? If you're a superstar, you're going to get the max. You're Everybody will. I just think it's I, – I don't picture him as, like, the type of guy who feels like he needs to placate the fans <laughs> with any sort of comments like that. Like, he's just doing his own thing. Yeah, but maybe you're caught up in it. You're there. You had forced your way out of Cleveland. Now this does seem like a great thing. and Perhaps. The history of the Celtics, blah, blah, blah. But you're right. It doesn't seem like a Kyrie thing to do. No. So they do have a very young roster. All those guys we were reeling off were pretty young. Um, And so now they're going through some ups ups and downs during the season. So they lost to the Suns on December 19th. Uh, And then in a post-game locker room interview... They were talking to him, and he said a few things that he was just kind of like, everybody took it as he's ripping his teammates. I remember this. Uh, One of the things he said, like, he needs him to actually care about actually trying in certain possessions. 
Here's uh, some more of his comments. The best thing I can say is experience. We're lacking it, and because of that, we have a lot of uh, learning to do. So we have a lot of ground to make up and, um, in that aspect. And, um, you know, it gets tough. When it gets hard, you got to think. We got to do the right things. You can't, you know, gamble and, and think that it's going to be the winning play. You know, when, you're, when your job is called upon, you got to do it to the best of your ability. You got to come in and make an impact for the minutes that you're playing out there. It doesn't matter who you're going against. It, it, it matters the type of preparation you have, what you're going out and uh, trying to accomplish. What's the big picture? What are we doing here? These are a lot of things that I don't think that um, some of my teammates have faced of just every single day. It's not easy to be great. So the things that you're doing, that you've done your whole entire career, of being able to, you know, kind of coast by in certain 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 situations, and you've gotten away with your youth and stuff like that, being on a championship ball club, you can't get away with that. And you might have to say he's not wrong. Those are good things to uh, tell a young team. It's just typically the sort of thing that you say behind closed doors. But. Yeah. Who knows, maybe he had, and that was falling on deaf ears, and now I'm going to take it to the media. Or maybe that's just that age Kyrie wasn't as thoughtful about how will this affect them. Yeah, and that's probably, that's probably what it is. So, yeah, people were like, here he is just ripping his teammates. Like, nothing's his fault. Which, I mean, at the time, like, Tatum and Brown and Marcus Smart were so young that do you really need that? But I mean, those are those are wise words, I think. Yeah, in in December, like you've always been the best player. You, you know, you do need to realize, you know, even the doesn't little, work at this level. Yeah, the little tiny things really do matter now. They didn't ever matter for you before. And I somewhat wonder if it was like he had just come from playing with LeBron and thought, like, I'm LeBron now. Absolutely. Like I can just talk to these guys like I'm LeBron now, and they're like, you're not. <laughs> You're great, but you're not LeBron. They have a very interesting, uh, just interconnected history together. Just the fact that that they played together is... And I think I even saw a clip the other day of uh, LeBron being like, I wish it would have worked yes. out. Yes, yeah. LeBron's like, you know, now when I see him, I'm like, that's the guy that I should have been playing with forever. And just from, if I can defend Kyrie... You know, he was 1-1, went to Duke. You know, he thinks that he's going to grow up to be Batman. And yeah. then he, he plays with LeBron, yeah. who is the most alpha of alpha. Yeah. And so he's always playing second fiddle to LeBron. Which and probably, he was already there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, LeBron, so he's, he was already there, and then they're like, all right, we're bringing LeBron back. <laughs> yeah, and so then he goes to Boston thinking, okay, finally it's my time to be a leader and an alpha, and people look at you like, no. No. And I think that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of athletes of you're not you're not destined to be one of the greats. So that criticism that he gave in the post game was uh December nineteenth. So on February first, Celtics are now in fourth place, which is not where they thought they would be, especially after the previous season. And he was asked about his mindset and Hey, remember when you said you were going to re-sign with Boston? You you said that to an arena, and we had audio and everything, and, and he said, ask me July 1st, <laughs> which is when free agency begins. And they said, well, why did you say that? Back in October, he said, well, it was just the excitement, feeling emotionally invested, coming off an injury last season, trying to prove something, trying to be very much of a team-oriented player, which I am naturally. But at the end of the day, I spent the last eight years trying to do what everybody else wanted me to do in terms of making my decisions and trying to validate through the media, through other personnel, managers, anybody in this business. I don't owe anybody shit. Okay. I mean, he's not wrong. But if you're wondering, why are we booing him tonight? These are the passionate Boston sports fans who... Yeah, they'll remember that he's not they're not owed anything by this guy. They'll hold a grudge for sure. Um one of the more loyal or I, I guess you would say loyal passionate fan base areas of the of the entire country. 
I can't wait, dude. And he's going to fucking bury them, too. I know. You think? Yeah. Yes. So that was February 1st where he's like, I don't know. Dan placed uh, the bet in the wrong series. Maybe. I think he's just going to be himself. Yeah, I had bet on him to be Western Conference Finals MVP. I still got a chance to make my money back here. How? Because I have a uh, hundred on. Oh, on Mavs title. Mavs title and okay. Luca to be Finals MVP. Okay, fair enough. So let's see here. Uh, so that was February first. February eighteenth is the All Star game. Hmm. It's so now a video comes out of Kyrie Irving. And Kevin Durant having a very close uh, conversation. And so some people are putting this together like, wait, they're both free agents at the end of the year. There was already a lot of Durant noise. As always. That Durant will will be leaving because he's not happy. I mean, who could be happy <laughs> with the Warriors and even when their superstars kind of backed down and said, you know what, we'll just let you be in charge. Do we'll, your we'll thing. We'll recruit you. We'll... Yeah, but Draymond yelled at him in a huddle, so Jeez. can't recover from that. So reporters started saying, hey, maybe you two guys are like teaming up and trying to go somewhere. Uh, Kyrie says to NBC Sports Boston, what I do with my life is my business. It's none of yours, none of anybody's business. So it's a video of me and my best friends talking, and then it turns out to be a dissection of a free agency meeting. I don't get that. I'm so glad. That now I'm asked questions about it. I'm so glad that we don't have this version of him. No, because he's grounding now. <laughs> Touching grass. I'm yeah. telling you, it's the grass, dude. So later, after they ended up, they did go to the Nets, Kevin Durant admitted during his podcast <laughs> that, yes, they had formulated their plan to team up the following offseason during that all-star game meetup. So the reporters were absolutely right. Yeah, of course. The video were. that they caught just happened to be them talking about, hey, man, because yeah. I think somebody might have kind of overheard a, did I hear the word max? Or two max? Two max slots? But then he lied about it. Mm, I think he was just more saying, what, a conversation with my friend means I'm leaving? Yeah, well, we... <laughs> You you ended up leaving. So, <laughs> yeah, so I think he was just saying it's none of your business. I don't know. That whole thing felt pretty shady to me at the time. So that playoff run, uh, they didn't make it even to the Eastern Conference Finals with Kyrie healthy. Uh, they fell to the Bucks. Did the Bucks win the title that year? Yes. Twenty nineteen. It was. So you're skipping one important detail. Mm. No, that was uh, the uh, Raptors year, wasn't it? Perhaps, but we're so okay. The Nets won forty eight games the year before with Kenny Atkinson as their head coach. Good I'm, team. I'm not on the Nets yet. Okay, I thought you said No 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 no. We're still on the Celtics. Okay. Now we get to the playoffs. I'm sorry. Kevin Durant did jump ahead once they got to okay, the Nets. Okay. Sorry, but he's still with the Celtics. Sorry. Okay. So now twenty nineteen, the Celtics lose to the Bucks in five. And Kyrie had a bad series. Okay. 20.4 points per game, shot 35%, uh, 21% from free, uh, from three. So certainly not the – yeah, you can't have that if you're the guy. No. We would be ripping Luka to shreds. <laughs> In their season-ending loss, game five, he shot six of 21, one assist, one rebound, three turnovers – and was a minus 25. Is that bad? Well, the one assist was great, though. <laughs> so now that offseason, they do sign with, he signs with the Nets. Him and Kevin Durant each got matching four year, $141 million max contract uh, contracts. And yes, uh, that was so that was after the finals where Durant was hurt. Right? Yes. And that's why Durant didn't even play that didn't first play. year. Correct. Because oh, he went yeah. he went back out on the Hurt court. Hurt his Achilles. Yes. 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 So now Boston loses Kyrie for nothing. 
At least Cleveland got some stuff. So now his first return to Boston is December 18th, 2020. Actually, the, their first game back, uh, he missed it. He missed that one. That's due right. to injury. But now he's back in uh, December, and he was burning sage on the floor. As the, so, he's burning sage, walking up and down the floor. That's his pregame ritual. It works. <laughs> it Did, does. Do you mean the the 2020 season? Yes. Okay. He this- says it comes from native tribes. A lot of native tribes. Being able to sage, just cleanse the energy, make sure we're all balanced. When we come into this job, we come into this place, it's not anything I don't do at home that I did today. I saged the last game. I plan to sage every game if the opposing team will allow me to. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of stuff I do at home, stuff you probably do at home as well that I don't want us to do at work. (laughs) So, Have you ever saged, though? I mean, I definitely had like a pot dealer... (laughs) <laughs> okay. Is, what is no, sage? Is it is it a like incense? incense type yeah, thing? But you, it's like a bush that you like like uh, wrap up, but then you burn it. Yes, and you just kind shake of like it. you shake yeah. it over like whatever and like what like for example in this studio, God knows it needs saging. Um, you just walk around and you just sage it, and it just kind of you know it cleanses the air, it cleanses the spirit. Let's sage this place next week. I don't. I feel like the. Are we in here next week? Yeah, I think we're here. Are the uh, laws these days? You can't do anything like can't smoke, can't sage. Yeah, I would say we should we should ask first. <laughs> I'm sure you could sage. What if you ask forgiveness later? <laughs> Great point. May thirtieth. The sage thing was so weird when it happened. Now we go to 2021. Now we're at a playoff series against the Celtics. A fan threw a water bottle at Kyrie's head. After Brooklyn won game four. Um, Why? Not the victim blame. But Kyrie stomped on the Celtics logo at midcourt when he was walking off the floor. Yeah, and you don't do that. Went after Lucky. (laughs) He dragged his shoe across Lucky the Leprechaun's face. And you just don't do that. (laughs) So, while I'm glad that we don't have to deal with, like, all this other part of the Kyrie experience. Yes, thank God. I really wish he would do that again. <laughs> I'd subscribe. Seriously. Like whether it's, you know, if... if it's a game winner. Game seven or something. If he it. just goes and stomps on Lucky. He won't do it now because he's the adult. He's team dad. But it would be awesome. The next year they met again in the playoffs. He was talking about hearing boos and he said, well... It's uh, like the scorned girlfriend that just wants an explanation for why I left, but they're hoping for a text back. So he called the Boston fans the scorned girlfriend. And then uh, also in that series, um, the Celtics swept the Nets. There's a video. Of him stomping on the logo or dragging his foot on the logo. Okay, oh, no, he's so dramatic. That was Very specifically deal. aimed for Lucky's face. He did. Uh, look at this foresha- I mean. foreshadowing. Oh. And uh, oh. in game one of that series that they, they swept the Nets, uh, Kyrie gave the finger to the crowd. He was fined $50,000 by the NBA for that. And so now imagine you are a Boston fan, and now you're reading about Oh, he's the greatest leader. Teammate. He's, he's just, helped he's the so young good guy for Luca. come along. Yeah. He's, it's got to drive them insane. Right. They're like, what? Get more grass. It's not a bad point. He's grounded, man. And, like, there is a racial component to this. Not to say that, like... Uh, it's Boston and it's yeah, black not to, guy? Yeah, not to say that, like, you know, they haven't rooted for tons of black athletes before. But he has made comments before about, like, I did not feel, like, welcome or comfortable in, in this city. That he heard the N-word there and all a that lot. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, it, it's Boston. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's Jake with the Dumb Zone News. Have you guys seen this video of this giraffe attacking this kid at Falsa yes. Room? I heard about it. Yeah, don't get in the back of a car or the back of a truck at Fossil Rim. 
kind of feel like we're doing a little Darwinism with your parents. Doing a little victim blaming. Yeah, why are we blaming the giraffe? Stupid parents. No, he's. I'm blaming, blaming the parents good. and the kid. Like, like, was it a baby? Um, two year old. It's yeah. two year old. Yeah. And the giraffe, like, what? Picked it up by the yeah. shirt. And, like, kind of tossed it. Oh, really? Yeah, grabbed yeah. him by the shirt and took him up. And like, if you've ever been there, which I've done this three or four times. I don't know that we've taken Carter, but we've definitely taken Nora three or four times. Uh, if you have like a sunroof, which I don't, but my wife does, that giraffe will put its head all the way in the car. Oh, yeah. Or even if you just roll down like the, the passenger and driver's side window, like that giraffe's head is in the car. This looks like a guy who would oh, yeah. put his two-year-old in the back of his I didn't car. want to say anything, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it tracks. Come on. It does. It does. So this happened over the weekend. And yeah, it's like, dude, it's... Have you ever been up close with a giraffe? They're huge. They're amazing. They I are amazing. You, I thought you'd been to Fossil I've Rim. I've been to Fossil Rim, so maybe I have, but it feels like I didn't get that close to it. Well... I certainly didn't have the, the car open. I think <laughs> if you haven't been up close to one, you think of them as like, oh, it's kind of like a gentle... Sure. Dude, they're huge. They're vegetarians. Exactly. Like you think, yeah, exactly. Have oh, you seen the me. neck fight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When they <laughs> neck fight. Watch the videos of the neck fighting. It's insane. They're violent animals. Really? They're giraffes big. net neck fight? Oh, it's crazy. And I think this is kind of the precursor. Like that's their foreplay. Hmm. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I think feel like it you is. Could have just made that up. I know. I'm serious. I'm serious. I think I read it somewhere. Well, I mean. Even humans, sometimes fighting is foreplay, right? Damn, look at that. Oh, That's, my gosh. Like, look at that in comparison to the so size just of those swinging trees. his giant neck and slapping it with his head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it feels like that would be like, bad. Look, look at that tree, Dan. They're going to get that tree CTE. Is, that tree's probably 20 feet tall. Yeah. ESPN. I'm telling you, it's foreplay. Uh, speaking of, uh, former Dallas Mavericks player Delonte West arrested in Virginia. Oh, Delonte. How did he get there? Good question, actually. <laughs> well, he, my he, guess... He started walking when he got cut by the Mavs. And <laughs> I was going to say, my there. guess is not airplane. <laughs> no. He shouldn't have slept with LeBron's mom. Oh, That's where it all went yeah. south. He suffered a medical emergency as police were attempting to arrest him. That's sad. Mm. It is very sad. Mark Cuban tried to save him, and if Mark can't save you. Yeah. That's a tough one. We, <laughs> like, this sounds made up, but we would legitimately just see him, like, around work. Yeah. Oh, he'd be, like, panhandling. Yes. Hanging out. Yes. Like, in the parking garage. In the parking garage and stuff, like, after he had... You know, moved on from the Mavs. Didn't he like sleep in his car or something down there? Something like that. Then he multiple didn't times have a car, and then he had a bike that was stolen. It was just really sad. Yeah. I have another angle on the giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Rob. More giraffe video. Okay, we'll go back to the giraffe. Wow. Look at him. Look at that. That's uh, not that bad. That, that is that bad. But he dude, ripped a shirt. You're telling me if you saw your kid. Well, I'm just saying, like that, you you're would... right. Don't put your kid in the back. Yeah, pad yeah you're a truck. complete dumbass. I'd probably point the finger at myself. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, I saw the other day uh dog in back of truck with tailgate down. <gasps> nope. No. And it was like in our neighborhood, no. too. No, no, no. Just dog in back of truck is always worries me. Now, I did grow up in an era where I might have been in the back of a truck. For sure. Out on the roadways, yeah. Tailgate up. Yeah, we all were. Yeah. Tailgate up, yeah. Like, I'm just thinking, all right. You Have you the... been on the highway, though, in a truck? Yes. That seems excessive. In the back? It is. Yeah. Yep. Of course I have. <laughs> no, in the front. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dumb question. <laughs> no, in the front. Dude, we used to do the uh, <laughs> the highway surfing. Oh, where you'd stand up and hold on to the back of the... Yeah. Yep. This guy oh, used to be so balls out. Like you would just, I know, you would just ride on the back of a truck. And now he, on. now he won't even say slut. See, this is why it's yeah, it's true. 
we are different people than we were at a certain point. Like, yeah, you're so if you were put in prison for life at the age of 18, it would have to be like, wait, that doesn't seem right. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. No, I completely agree. The funny thing is, is that it doesn't happen the same to them. The women folk. Wait, hold, hold on. What do you mean? What do you mean? You think they're the same? No, I think that they develop judgment earlier than males do. Oh, okay. Hero. Like when we're in our mom, we do. Like they're not they're not the ones that are surfing, whatever you called it. What is no. it called? Chuck we just surfing? Called it, we just called it street surfing. That's not true, though, because I until health insurance deductibles became a thing, then I'm like, all right. What's this going to cost me if I act stupid? So that kind of straightened me out real quick. Yeah, but the fact is you thought through that. Yeah, you guys don't think we do. That Like, that's our thing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But we're still risky. I mean, I've told Dan and Blake this a million times, but I, I can watch it literally unfolding day to day. Like, you saw the girl here today, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, your son? Very cool. The girl's not going to, like, do. If my son came in here... He would have knocked all of Video Man's stuff down. Oh, yeah. He would have stolen this camera, <laughs> drank that Tabasco. Probably. <laughs> pulled his pants down. Probably. Like, why are you doing that? But he's also like one. She's like five. She was never like that. She was just never like that. Yeah, girls. Dan, you've got girls. Yeah, no. They... Is it the same? No, not like he's described. <laughs> no. And you always hear that. The real thing. How's your boy? Because your boy seems very nice. Like uh, my wife and daughter watched Brooks when we did the show at my house uh, last week, and they couldn't stop talking about him all weekend, how polite he was. They said he's like a little adult. He's a little gentleman. Yeah, he's a good kid. But as you saw, very energetic. Oh, she said she was exhausted. (laughs) Yeah. No, he's... Jumping up on the beanbag, he's running upstairs. He's got a lot of energy, but he's not as chaotic as I think Carter is. I mean, he'll jump up on the table and throw stuff everywhere, but not <laughs> he's not that. Uh, well, then, then okay, so there is nature, but then there is nurture too, you know? Yeah. And the nature, if you're Jake's son, you might yes, be a wild man. For sure. That's exactly right. Yeah, and, and if you're Chappie's you're, grandson. If you're Blake's son um, and he beats you, whoa, then you're just afraid. Right. Wow. Well, he's turned out okay. <laughs> you know, it's a weird thing. Is uh, I thought about tweeting this the other day, but then you got mad at me when I tweeted. Jeez, you got to stop thinking about me, dude. Well, I just want to be more like you. You were tweeting about how cool the Grateful Dead is. I just, I, anyways. Well, what was the tweet? Um, or the tweet that never happened. So, my wife and I were out of town. Uh, we. The kids were out of town. We went and stayed at a hotel and like went to dinner with some some other couples on Friday. My kids went um, to the beach with my parents for like three days. Yeah, that's so great. That's why it's great to have parents living here. Bro. It's awesome. Oh yeah, they're the best. And like when my son came back, he seemed like a different person. And I don't know because you... your parents don't take the shit you take. <laughs> no, it wasn't even that. It was just like like your mom seems no nonsensey. Yeah, not with them. Okay. Oh, not with grandkids, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's she's a normal grandma, you know? Mm-hmm. But it's just weird. Like, he says words now. He looks bigger. His face looks different. Like, oh. I, I actually looked at him You're saying morning. just three days without him? Yeah. Because I would like, tell you that when we went on cowboy trips or something. Like, at that age. I'd like, come just, back after a week, and it's like, you're actually different. It was so weird. Like, even just three days at that age, like, I got home, and I'm like, dude, you... You're like a person now. He doesn't seem like a baby anymore. And I had a really hard time with it this morning. <laughs> That's going to make me cry. I mean, he's like a little man now. That's so sweet. Anyways, back to the news. Dallas area, yeah, man Boston's enough. Pizza. Uh, you're familiar with Boston's Pizza? You yeah. You one over on 114? Yeah. For the uh, postseason, they have changed their name, Dan, to... Uh, Dallas Pizza. Okay. Because everybody's got to get in on the sports bit. Yeah, that'll show them. Yeah. I think, it. I, you know, what's funny is uh, when I saw this story, the line moved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they yeah. got in the news. 
that's their goal, right? Pretty much, yeah. They have three locations in Dallas. So you know how much it would have cost you to get the dumb zone to read you your thing like that? I actually don't know. I don't either. That's probably why this thing is failing. Yeah. Yeah, so they've got signs. It just says Is that Dallas really it? Pizza. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's that's what it's they just did. Just the it. blue line <laughs> through Boston <laughs> and then pretty Dallas much, yeah. above it's, it. It's it's uh it's pretty basic. Or remember the original Dumb Zone logo, I think somebody like one of our listeners just crossed out hang and wrote dumb. And that's what that was actually presented in some paperwork that was part of a uh, lawsuit that never really came to fruition. Yeah. Was that we were stealing that logo. We we're like, w- just a listener did that, and, and we only had it up for like a day. Yeah, the, <laughs> the funniest part about that was uh, they were like, this is theft of intellectual property. And we were like, well, we stole the original logo from uh, House Party. Yeah. <laughs> so let's... we've kind of already committed IP theft. Right. Here. No, they, <laughs> yeah, I guess they did if that's theirs. <laughs> Never you mind. Yeah. That was a... I'm going to counter sue you on behalf of uh, Christopher Kidd Reed. Right. <laughs> and LeBron. I think it was LeBron. I think LeBron. Our lawyer is LeBron's a smart ass, so... Like, actually owned it. Yeah, and he's like, well, actually, you're suing LeBron. Yeah. It's like, all right, dude. You, you want a smart ass to... lawyer. You don't need yeah, to put actually, that in there. Great. All right, there's your news. We've been going a long time. Have we? The Dumb Zone News. Like Take your kids to Fossil so Rims. Strong. Just don't put them in the back of your truck. It's a great place. <clears throat> what is uh, the difference between a sunroof and a moonroof? Moonroof bigger? Moonroof in the back seat. You have, you have both. both in the same car? <laughs> oh. Yeah. So it extends back. Yeah. So it's the whole thing. Hey, I've Instead heard of, of a moonroof. the front. Is this a funny development now that our interns make more money than we do? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's depressing. (laughs) Well, I mean, maybe for you that's funny, but Dan and Jake's producer has made more than them for uh, the last eight months. Yeah. (laughs) Combined. That's right. You combined Dan and Jake. We just had to get you on board, dude. And look at us now. Supermax. And look at us now. Uh, oh, yeah. This is me. I was waiting for one of you guys to say something. Today's uh, Thursday, June 6th. <clears throat> On this day in 1844, the Young Men's Christian Association uh, was founded in London. You know, I got to be honest. I never knew that's what that stood for. Really? Yeah. What? Oh. That feels... That's really dumb if you didn't know that. I mean, I just never like caught a, a like a, a Christian air to it. Like whenever I would go to the YMCA. Yeah, it wasn't like Jesusy or anything. It's just I think the roots were. I didn't know that. Yeah. I never really thought about it. And then later, as it became like an identity for the gay man, right? That just seemed. That's kind of what I thought of it, it as. Yeah. yeah. Wait, it became the identity. Oh, for the band. Okay, got it. I was like, what? The band, but then it would be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like a yeah, place yeah. where dudes yeah. just went and, Yeah, that's what I always thought. Wait, I mean, I heard that. Wait, what? Hey, uh, hold on. It's oddly specific there, Dan McDowell. <laughs> I just heard that. <laughs> Wait, I never... it became like a manhole, basically? Yeah. You're kidding. That's what I always thought of it as. Look it up. It's just wow. a place where All right. men found love. <laughs> okay. I mean, where else to find young men? At the YMCA. I don't know what that is. On this day in 1849, U.S. Army Major Ripley Arnold (laughs) established a fort on the bluffs near the confluence of the Clear Fort and the West Fork of the Trinity River. The fort was named for Arnold's commander, General Williams Jenkins Worth. Billy J. The area later would become the city of Fort Worth. Would you look at that? And now you know. Uh, just part of the story, and just at least the origin of the name. Not, it's not the whole rest. of. There's a lot more to Fort Worth, I believe. On this day in 1944, during World War II, Allied forces stormed the beaches of Normandy, France. Today is D-Day. They began the liberation of German-occupied Western Europe. Okay. You think you would have made it? 
Oh my God, no! <laughs> I was. Well, I saw somebody put out like a video today. Like somebody was taking pictures from, like the back. I would have liked to be that guy. Like I sit in the way back of the boat, and you can right. just take pictures. Mow everyone else down first. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know they didn't know what they were getting into? I have heard that. What do you mean? They all thought they're just gonna. I think they they thought they were going to get ice cream. Yeah, it was something. Well, <laughs> not that, but yeah, they didn't know. Uh, they were actually gonna supposed to bomb the bunkers to take out the the, the, the turrets. Big guns. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they got the wrong coordinates, so they actually just like bombed a field or just bombed something else. And so when they get off the boat to gunfire, they were like legit shocked. Yeah. Mm. Which makes that morning even worse. I thought it was pretty bad already. It was. <laughs> I forgot I'm on video. Uh, Saving Private Ryan. Have you watched that? Oh, of course. That's a brutal scene. I mean, that, it feels realistic. Actually, I think I talked to, uh, after Band of Brothers, I told you Uncle Gary like had a 90-year-old friend yeah. who did, who parachuted in or whatever, and had him watch Band of Brothers and, and get back to me and talk about it. And uh, I think he said he couldn't even watch that scene. Yeah. Ugh. Like it was actually thing. too realistic. Oh, yeah. man. And I called him a pussy. <laughs> And on this day, the first ever event it was Concept held at Cowboys Stadium in Arlington. A World War II veteran <laughs> pussy. God, Just a movie, bro. Bro. Go on. <laughs> uh, first event ever at Cowboys Stadium in Arlington was? Mike Brooks. George, George Strait. Strait. George Strait. I can't stand watching concerts in that stadium. It's the worst. I think that, I was, was, that was the review after the George Strait the concert. Worst. Yeah. It, it, and I have seen uh, Garth Awful. there, and it was not, it was not enjoyable. I saw Paul McCartney there with Donovan. That's really weird, dude. And he would don't, he would just tell me how many, like he knew two out of the nineteen songs we listened to. Nineteen. Like that was the. I feel like he'll and go. Then I think he left thirty on you. Well, I think then Donovan like left. Oh, okay. Or something weird. He doesn't strike me as a big Paul McCartney guy. Um, I'm going to tell you for the second time today, that's racist. <laughs> Just observational. I was thinking about it. Is it racist thing this morning? Hit me. Okay. Because I was kind of thinking how, um, you know, you look back at things and then say, oh, that was really racist that they did that. Well, how about the fact, I don't know why I was thinking this, but like Tarzan. What? <laughs> okay. Let's, let's follow him. Was white. Mm-hmm. But Tarzan is just a story, right? Mm-hmm. Had they made Tarzan black, like um, the first black movie is Tarzan, okay. raised by apes or whatever, you would not the Tarzan lore would be over. We would never. It would be racist, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think it would have had the same but cultural it, hit. But yeah. right now, it'd be gone. There would be no Tarzan. Like now, Tarzan kind of still exists. It's Tarzan, right? A little bit. Yeah. There's probably, oh, there's still movies like yeah. Brendan Fraser. Okay, that is, what is that, Tarzan? But, and then I was Tarzan. thinking, what could you. Like the comment? What? Uh, that is not a Tarzan I've ever seen. Disney. You know how now they will cast women in men's, or, you know, Ghost it was Buster. a man role or, yeah. Or, yeah. or It'll drive some people up and out like, oh, no, a black guy's in that role because you woke, right? Ariel. So could you today, though, cast a black Tarzan? Or would that be racist? That's where I was leading to. Uh, after all these thoughts. What time in the morning were you thinking this? I don't know. I think probably that would not go over well. I don't like, think so it- it's the one movie we can't make woke. Unless we made Tars Woman. That- Tars, wait, that's an... But it's not Tar's man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is happening? What is ha- I have no idea. Today's birthdays include Jake's favorite cowboy ever. Des Bryant. No. Michael Irvin. Yes. Oh, damn. Okay, the cowboy Jake wanted to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have Bill Bates. Really? I thought you loved Bill Bates. I was a big... Bill Bates fan for okay. sure. Bill Bates was solid. Just because I thought because he wore the shark head. 
No, that was no, that's Kenny, Kenny Gant. <laughs> I just, I thought perhaps I could make it to special teams. Jake's dream was to be a gunner on special teams. I think you could have. I, I appreciate. That. <laughs> like I dreamt okay. of being uh, Jim Brown, right? Or Emmett Smith, right? A Cy Young winner or something. Yeah, you dreamt of. I was like, I, maybe they'll let me cover kicks. <laughs> Which is more realistic. I mean, it's not greedy. Sure. Thank you. DeAndre Hopkins, 32. Kenny Pickett, 26. Small hands. Really? Yeah. Is that yeah. what they said? I think Brink, uh, Blake brings that up every year. Eagles. Needs a new eagle. Did he uh, just have a sex tape come out? I think he did. Kenny Pickett? Yeah. A sex tape? Yeah, he's, he's he dates like, a, like an influencer. I hate that word. Well, that's what I am. I hate that word. Oh, yeah. I was going to bring this to the show because uh, NFL, tw- <laughs> NFL Twitter was uh, going back and forth on which team's quarterback would last the longest. Good grief. Jacksonville thought Trevor Lawrence done in a flash. Dak why, might why, last a little bit. Why would this have ever been a conversation? Daniel Jones, <laughs> premature for sure. Dan likes it. <laughs> Daniel Jones. I don't see him in porn anywhere, and I'm looking it up. How about I mean, uh, where'd they go, Baker? Uh, <laughs> I, don't I think he'd Baker. last a while. You think so? Oh, yeah. Why are you scrolling down, video Nobody man? Nobody believed in him. I just want to look at ba- uh, Baker. Tommy Smith is 80. He's the Olympic raising the black gloved fist guy. <laughs> also, civil rights leader. Uh, Played for the Bengals for one year. They Didn't tried. know that. You know, when you had like 80 rounds in the draft, they'd just draft what, you know, hey, let's just draft this sprinter. Yeah, that used to seem like it was a, like a much more common occurrence. I think because the Cowboys did it with Bob Hayes. With Bob Hayes, yeah. And it kind of worked. And so, yeah, well, why not Tommy Smith? Uh, Tyler Collins is 34. I just bring him up because he's, I think he's from around your neck of the woods. Richlandy. Local baseball player who played for the Tigers for a bit. Okay. Uh, Robert England is 77. You may know him from Nightmare on Elm Street. You certainly know him. Tyler Collins is from Lubbock. Well, he if maybe born in Lubbock, but I swear to God he played around here. Okay. In high school. We believe you. Hey, I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, we believe you. He got really, really you. emphatic yeah, about I, that. Yeah, we believe you. Hey, I swear to God. <laughs> I swear on my child's life. Like, okay, dude. I will sacrifice <laughs> Sorry, what, her tonight. What was it? Uh, Robert England, Nightmare on Elm Street. Also, you probably remember Stranger Things. Ah, Smoke Monster. Oh, uh, yeah. The Dharma Initiative. Did you like Stranger Things? I liked the soundtrack. I couldn't follow. I have ADD. Mm. I know. Uh, Sandra Bernhardt is 69. Ah, uh, just always gave me the super creep. Were you a Roseanne fan? Um, you see around that? I was not like I was not much of a fan, but I definitely have seen her stand up special that used to run on Comedy Central in the summer many times. She looks like Phil Jackson to me and it freaks me out. She just gives me the Interesting. the creepiest vibes. Ugh. Don't like that. Uh King of Comedy. <laughs> She's good in King of Comedy. As a weirdo. Do you know my theory on Roseanne? No, but share it. Um I, I don't think that Trump would be in a position to win the election had we not canceled Roseanne. I think when we took Roseanne from them, it caused the revolt. <laughs> from the them meaning the right the, the new the new Roseanne or yeah the yeah old yeah because if you remember like they when they brought back new Roseanne yeah she, she said some like maybe Nazi ish oh that's stuff. right that's right that's right and then they fired her. And it was like, that was like the one show that conservatives had had in a very long time. I mean, every other show has a gay guy or, you know, whatever, yeah. right? Woke. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm of the belief that the political climate in this country shifted when we took Roseanne from them the second time. I can see that. And I, I honestly believe that, that they would have just been chilled, like, ah, eh, whatever, we got Roseanne. Had we just not taken it from them? I would question you, but what did you major in in college? Political science, my friend. So? so he would know. Colin Quinn is 65. 
Still remember the first monologue after Norm left. Oh, really? Yeah. I was pretty upset, but I didn't mind it. So he, something on, because I hated Colin Quinn I for said a long monologue. time. We, we can update. update, yeah. I hated him for a long time because he replaced Norm, but I later grew to appreciate Colin Quinn. I don't mind him at all. Um, it was just at the time, yeah. What was the first one? He did like the whole thing about replacing Norm. Really? And I remember the I like the down. final line being something along the lines of, uh, like he made a bartender reference. Like, look, I might not make the drink the exact same way that you're used to it, but I, I want to give you a good drink or something. Like, he was cool about it. He knew who he was replacing. Which I thought was awesome. And the best. They probably should have gone to a two person thing right then. I think so too. You can't I mean you, how do you fill his shoes? Yeah. You know? That that would have been the move. They they kind of set him up to fail. Paul Giamatti is fifty seven. Got Pete on. What? What? Just in the show? I, I that's all I know. He was in yeah. billions. It's the opening scene of the T V show Billions. He gets Pete on. Mm. Uh, James Monkey Schaefer is 54. Says here from Corn. <laughs> I once saw them. I think wow. Courtney Love opened. What band was she in? Or, uh, she was in Hole. Who else was on the bill? Uh, well, Hole opened for Corn. Okay. And then uh, Bush opened for Tool. <laughs> So those were two separate shows? Yeah. Because typically it's like yeah. not really possible to have two of them. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like a day-night doubleheader thing. Yeah, okay. We're bearing the lead. I would have never seen you at a corn show, Dan. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. man, you should have seen me there, man. I was. Old corn that. was great. I had like a pacifier hey. in. And... <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're confusing so many different things right now. Oh. Um. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if he's... There's a video of... Uh, what's that guy's name who ran for president? And his Trump. No, no, no. And his uh, daughter has, like, weird face. And she's... Trump. No. My, <laughs> Mike Huckabee. Huckabee yeah. Oh. Look up Mike... Weird Huck face. Look up Mike Huckabee corn. Is this going to ruin corn for us? No, I think you're gonna, you guys are going to love this. Okay. Now, it's Nothing not... Nothing can ruin It's not monkey, for me. but I, th I think it's... Head? Yes. Brian Head. Is, is that his name? Yes. I want you guys to watch this while we're here. Uh, it's Mike Huckabee playing bass with... Corn is spelled with a K, Rob. If you're with the guy... Oh, you know. but Brian Head is all like reformed and he's Jesus-y now. That's why Mike Huckabee... That is correct. Okay. That is correct. And it is uh, an absolutely hilarious video because Mike Huckabee is playing a corn song. And yes, his daughter has weird face. You know I wasn't wrong about that. <laughs> what? Oh, that's and he's so still weird. He's wearing a suit. <laughs> oh no! Jamming with corn. Yeah, and there's Mike Huckabee <laughs> slapping the bass. Oh no no no! No! <laughs> no. <laughs> this is uh, I've watched this probably ten years in a row. Well, that's on, great. On dudes trips. <laughs> You know what? I, you know what we need <laughs> to not ever see this again. No, no, no. We need Jake to host like a video stream where it's Jake's kind of like you invented, at least for us anyway, the uh, the group text bit where we. Yeah, I need to know your video, your dude trip playlist. Yeah, well, because you've always talked like, oh, I'll watch a helicopter crash video. That's a, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of helicopter crash. So it's just a random. Do you ever do a lady thing? Uh, get an Airbnb and get a bunch of ladies together. <laughs> oh, she we, perked up real we, quick when you said you ever do. do a lady thing. We do, but we don't sit around and watch like. That's what I was wondering. What happens at those and helicopter crashes? Yeah, I think they just talk they just, about periods and. Yeah. Yes, we just talk about knitting and knitting. <laughs> periods and knitting. Yeah. Uh, Bud Dwyer before. every year. Uh. A lot of like stuff from the war in Iraq. What does that mean? There's just some gnarly stuff. That's so dark. You like you guys chill out to this? I, About uh, I laugh. You laugh. What? Uh, plane crashes, boat Faces crashes. Of death? Yeah, I mean it's a lot of that. 
Bum fights? <laughs> remember that? You know, I feel like I've aged out of it. Do I remember that? Who was the big guy that... Did you ever buy a um, bum fight? Kimbo Slice? Yes. See, she didn't even have to provide me like a second... Yeah, Kimbo Slice, <laughs> he knew it. information. Rapper Rocker... Uncle Cracker is 50. Ah, Kid Rock. I think he was in his band. Yeah. Aubrey Anderson Emmons is 17. That is Lily on Modern Family. Never seen an episode. Born on this day now dead, you have Nathan Hale, who once said, I regret that I have only but one life to give for my country. And everybody's like, yeah, all right. Is that all he did? Like, who is he? Uh, he's some kind of revolutionary war guy, right? Yeah, he was like on the forefront of all that. But that was his big quote. You know, patriotic. And, and then everybody else is like, God, I'm trying to figure out something cool to say like that. Man. Yeah. It's a yearbook quote. Hmm. And okay. Thomas Dimitrov Sr. I just discovered him this morning because he was actually an NFL quarterback for one year. Didn't know that. And that just made me think, you huh. kind of thought you had a chance to be an NFL GM. You didn't. <laughs> no. It's kind of like what we were talking Thomas about Dimitrov the other day with like... Had that door open. Yeah, when you find out like every single person went to an Ivy League school or lived in Manhattan. So they're like, okay, this guy's dad is chappy. This right. guy's dad used to play quarterback for the Browns. Like the greatest NFL coach of all Probably time. Probably listen to that guy. His dad wrote like the Bible of football, Steve Belichick. Yeah. yeah in fact, I, we Tom never had a shot. Yeah, he played for Paul Brown. Like, okay, I think he might have... Picked up a thing or two Some of that has trickled down yeah. to Thomas Dimitrov. So now I'm just doing this. Died on this day. Sucked. Uh, dead on this day, still dead. 1799, Patrick Henry. His famous quote, he's a Revolutionary War guy. Mm-hmm. Peace so sweet. Give me liberty or give me death. Very good. Okay. A, wow. A famous bit of ticket audio. Unpatriotic losers in this room. <laughs> No, I, I knew it. <laughs> Bro, I totally knew it. Uh, 1968 died on this day, Robert Kennedy. One day after being shot. And then some 50 years later, uh, had a son who has worms in his brain. Right, and hangs out with Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Didn't Aaron Rodgers say he could be the vice president on his ticket? Yes. He did. Like he's he did been offered that. that? Yeah. While playing. He grounds a lot. Why does anybody Rogers hate Dak here? Let's just love Dak. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be happy that we don't have, like, Dak's not doing that stuff. Let's win some playoff games. Mm. Ooh. Eh, fair. Great fair. counterpoint. Fair. <laughs> Great counterpoint. Fair. I think I'd rather have the guy with the worms. Yeah. Uh, and died on this day in 2016. You won't believe this when I tell you. Okay. Kevin Ferguson. You won't believe it when I tell you the name that Kevin Ferguson went by. Kimbo Slice. Oh, oh. my God. Oh. Do you guys believe in synchronicity? Because it happens just do this? all the time. No, I have like this magic synchronicity power. I'm not kidding you. I'm I think not it's kidding. called whenever you hang out with another woman for a long enough time. <laughs> yeah. Sinking periods? No. That's not necessarily what Jake meant. Boy. This was like you would buy these DVDs like at, you know, skate shops station. or whatever, gas stations. Yeah, and just watch them fight like a guy who weighed 120 pounds. And you're like, what? <laughs> There's like an alligator in the background for some reason. Like, what? Why is this legal? Kimbo Slice. And that was Today in History. Like, look at that dude. What do you mean? Like, look at him. He's hot. And I'm just like, he doesn't even look real. He looks like a character in Street Fighter. You want to keep going? No. Well, yeah, let's not. Let's. Uh... No, let's not let the woman <laughs> say anything else. Less is more. Well, we're just trying to stay on the air. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us today, Jasmine. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks to you too, Rachel. Sorry, Jake forgot you were even here. Um, no. Sorry, Dan forgot that it was Dan that forgot you were even here, and not Jake. <laughs> Any closing remarks, uh, Jasmine? Or should we just get out of here? You should probably just get out of here. I've said enough. Adios, mofo.